What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Best Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Rustler. Today, I am sitting down with Clay Byersdorfer. He is a Army veteran, uh, recipient of the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart. Uh, he has just launched his sports satire publication. He's the producer, editor, creator of The End of the Bench. Uh, so if you like satirical news outlets, you should check him out. He's also a co-writer on the Duffel blog. So if you're a veteran, I know you've heard of that. Uh, we had a great time. We talked about the military. We talked about movies. We talked about video games and just all kinds of stuff. We, uh, we sat down for like two hours. It was a really fun episode. I know you guys will enjoy it. So check it out. Also, there's no official start to the podcast. I don't I do like that. an intro. I, I film it separately because yeah. I feel like uh, when you do it while somebody's sitting there, yeah. it's like your one sheet. Right. It feels weird. Yeah, it's you awkward. Know? If I was like, I'm sitting down today yeah. with with disabled veteran <laughs> and war hero, you'd be like, ah. It's like a, like a movie screener. You know, they do like the press run and they just have those very awkward interviews where they'll just sit celebrities and like just run every journalist from every publication who asks the same uh -huh. exact questions. Uh -huh. What awkward. was your workout plan like for Captain America? And he's like, ah. Push-ups. Yeah. Push-ups. Uh, and then the next guy comes in. So tell me about your workout regimen. Like, so what are your hopes for this movie? Like, yeah. I did people like it yeah. you know like uh, okay um, stuff. yeah so wait you said that you got out in 2016 2016 officially i got uh hurt uh 2014 um and then took them and the va just almost two years to fully decide like hey he's good <laughs> like, yeah he doesn't need to come back we don't need this young man anymore so i was just yeah basically sitting for almost like like I said, two years just collecting paychecks. Like, wasn't even on, like, I was on active orders technically, but yeah. That's kind of what I did. And I mean, not officially, but um, so I was, I was infantry in the Marines. Um, and I did two deployments and then I got married and went to, uh, I became a marksmanship instructor, which saw, is like a non, yeah, non, non deployable unit. Yeah. And I had two years left on my contract yeah. and they were just kind of like, we don't know what ah, to do. With yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then when it came to the end, they were like, so do you want to try right. to reenlist? <laughs> yeah. Cause we don't really need, I don't yeah. know if we could really use you. And I'm yeah. like, ah, nowadays yeah, you'd be so. like, you're staying in for sure because yeah. we need bodies. Yeah. Right <laughs> yeah. Everybody got out after co I, I'm, I'm so happy that I did get out though. Yeah. But cause I remember like not to get political or anything, but the big election was Trump versus Hillary. Yeah. yeah. And everybody, I lived in California yeah. and on Camp Pendleton and yeah. everyone's like, well, Trump's going to lose. Yeah. Trump's going to lose. Hillary's going to take right. over. And I was like, ah, I don't know. Is this what I want? Like, uh, like is to that... serve under Hillary? Or well, like not just that, but also like, there's going to be lots of drawbacks. Yeah. We're not going to go to war anymore. It's going to be a lot of like, because people don't realize, like, when you're not deploying in the military, it's all, like... It's the most boring job in the world. It's dog and pony show. <laughs> yeah. It's raking leaves. It's terrible. Polishing doorknobs. Yeah. Like, just the most mundane shit. Yeah. And so I was like, I don't know if I want to do four that years sucks. of that. Yeah. Like, I, I, like... I want, I would like to go on deployment. I would like to, you know... Mm -hmm. And so I was like, man, I guess I'll just get out. And then he won, and yeah. all my buddies that stayed in for at least the first couple of years were yeah. like, "It's great! We've got so much money! We got all new gear! We got like, oh, we're going, we're ramping up!" And I was yeah. like, "Oh, of yeah. course!" And then COVID hit, yeah. and then they all very much changed their tune. Yeah. Which uh, do you still have friends that are in? I do. Yeah, they're more um, senior level now. So oh yeah, less yeah. Like Joe's more. I mean. Um, my first sergeant is retired. I think my commander, old commander's retired. My first line leader, uh, shout out Joshua Brig, 
uh, I think is now the first sergeant in my old unit. So it's just like a full circle. I mean, it's now like, it'll be, I mean, 10 years in May, technically, since I got back from Afghanistan. It's just crazy, like, how time yeah. flies like that. But, yeah, still know a few people in. There's Yeah, I, I have the same thing. I have one or two. Uh, actually, I have three people I know that are in. One of my boots, like one of the guys I trained, yeah. is now a like a senior drill instructor in a boot at Isn't that boot crazy? camp. Yeah, I know, I know. It. You I'm, see these kids grow up and like used to be like such a screw up, and then now it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. This person is yeah. you, commanding you, our armed forces. You told <laughs> us you had snow blindness right, and right. you couldn't train that day. And now like, you're training and people now how to you're, shoot a rifle. Yeah, and now you're making marine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if just, people only knew that kind of stuff, yeah. I think they'd be like, I mean, obviously, I feel like Americans have this like very rosy picture of the military overall. Uh huh. Um, but I think if they knew that stuff, they'd be like much more cautiously. I've always said about it. I've always said that, like, when I was a kid, the commercial for the Marine Corps was like the few, the proud, the yeah. Marines, but it should be like. The second string athletes, the C students, yeah. the Marines. It's like, you remember that guy that was kind of athletic, but yeah. not enough for D1 level? Yeah. And you're like, what happened to him? Marine Corps. Right. <laughs> you know that guy that was kind of smart, but yeah. like didn't really try that hard? Yeah. And didn't have a kind sense of, a, of direction. Yeah. yeah. What happened to him? Yeah. Marine Corps. Like, that, that's right. exactly what. Uh, it's the last resort. Yeah. It's the best thing. That should be the calling card for the military. It's just. What else you got? You got nowhere else to go? You got nowhere go? else to go. It's either this or homeless, but I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then whenever you get out of the military, it's you can either get back in the military yeah. or become homeless yeah. again. So. Yeah. yeah. This same question. Same question. Same question. Yeah. No. I, uh, so you, uh, you wrote for the Duffel blog? I did. I still do, yeah. And I manage all of their uh, social media, actual today, social media today, so. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's so cool. I love. <laughs> oh, it's great. I, I think one of my favorite Duffel Blog articles I've ever seen was uh, in honor of Pride Month, son comes out to dad as Air Force <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a really fascinating. I mean, um, Paul Soldier and I, who have worked together in a various capacities for nearly almost like, I don't know, six, seven years now. Um I met him just like they had an open call for submissions years ago. And I was like, well, like I'm a writer by trade and like aspiring comedian. So I was like, I'll give it a shot. And, um, yeah, here we are like seven years later, I basically just, you know, running the show on social and putting out bangers and pissing people off. And it's pretty great. <laughs> it's pretty wild that, you know, you write something. And then, uh, I think the best part about satire is it can have such an impact. So like people, you know, the Pentagon, the White House, like, they read this stuff. You know, like, the That's chief so of awesome. staff, like, reads our stuff, and they'll comment back, and they'll – it's pretty wild, like, to just know that, like, your stuff can have that level of impact. What was – what what – what is there, like, one article that you wrote that got, like, I don't know, the most traction or whatever, and you were just like, this? This, this is the one yeah. that's – There was – um there's a couple that have been kind of recent. There was one that came out. I don't know if you saw. There was a letter that um, a group of uh, veterans published recently that came out and was like, we're against the vaccine, like the experimentation mm. on service members, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they were advocating like, hey, like you need to, you know, rescind the orders. Like you need to reimburse these people, you know, compensate these people for these damages that, you know, you potentially caused. Very noble cause, like, uh, you know, you know, collectively, um, but they penned this letter and they published it on Twitter at like three o'clock in the morning and said like, hey, we're sending this, like literally like it was an AOL email, like we emailed like <laughs> defense.com, you know, <laughs> like president at POTUS. And it was just like, um, again, the, the cause was very noble, uh, but um, the way they went about it was just kind of ridiculous. So I came up with the headline, like, and I think the title of the letter was like, um, military letter of accountability or some variation of that but uh i wrote military letter of accountability written entirely in comic sans <laughs> because um the the essence of it was just ridiculous right? yeah that how they not the essence of the you know the cause but how they went about it was just so terrible but at the same time was just like only service members would do that like be something like build something do something yeah. really great and then do it in the worst way possible um so there was that one. The one last year, uh, I got a lot of like random dudes in my 
comments, my DMs being like, you know, fucking, oh, can we cuss on this? Yeah, you can do whatever. Uh, You know, fucking live, like, you better not find out where where you live, or, you know, we better not find out where you live, all this kind of, like, crap. Um, So there's that with that. And then the other one that was probably, like, the biggest one that I wrote, I think it was last year, uh, Washington Post did an op-ed on, uh, I can't remember who wrote it, but there was an op-ed published that essentially was like, um, you know, we're, we're dealing with this inflation, this economic crisis, and, um, you know, a great way to reduce some of this would be to cut benefits to our veterans. <laughs> Which, like, on the outs, now it didn't say that, like, black and white, but it goes uh-huh, into but... all these reasons, like, well, like, people who say they're 90% aren't really 90% disabled, they're more like 60, so even, like, reducing it just by, like, 600, and makes this, like, grand argument, again, like, collectively not the worst thing but like the optics of it are just terrible but it's uh-huh. also like look at you know uh you know the elite calling for uh to take something away from like the elite you know the most deserving of people um so it was just wild to like you know to read this especially as a veteran so um i wrote a headline that was washington post asked veterans to just kill themselves already i saw that um, I saw, I which saw is that like one. a more drastic form of that problem because if you don't have any more veterans then it's less that you have to pay out uh, right so um i got a lot of pushback it actually had people from washington post like replying being like this is this is brilliant <laughs> so that was a good like uh pat on the back but yeah, it's been a really wild ride, uh, writing for Duffel Blog and just now like managing all their social, like seeing the people that we, you know, interact with and the people that we touch. It's uh, it's cool to be a part of for sure. That is that is pretty cool. It, it's talking about the feedback or like some of the things that people send. Yeah, I get it, but it's for I mean, just the sil- like the weirdest of things. This like I said, I said one time. On a podcast, I was like, I don't really like the show Breaking Bad. I got bored with it by the yeah. end. And people are like, I'll fucking kill you. Yeah. And then, I mean, you're like, what? Why? Yeah, and why? they're like, you are, it's not my fault. Your brain is broken and yeah. you don't appreciate good art yeah. and stuff. And I was like, I just I just got bored with it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. uh, Seinfeld has some good episodes, but overall, it's not as great as people think. And yeah. they're just like... I'm going to burn your house down. Yeah. And you're just like, well, for a what? TV show. Too. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Like, what? So it's crazy that people would send, like, it's clearly, you know, satire. It it's, is. It's, it's, it's very, I mean, it's labeled very clearly yes. on everything that we do. Like, people will threaten loss. Like, it's just like, first off, like, when it always gets thrown out because it's just like, it's fake. Like, uh-huh. literally fake. You embrace this uh, fake news, <laughs> you know, this term that is, so often you like that is what we do, but is, you know, it's done to make a point, to make a, you know, to bring awareness or to give a different perspective on something that's causing a lot of strife or a lot of, you know, anxiety within a certain community or a lot of potential trouble. Like that is what satire is for, both in a comedic and and a serious fashion, is to bring perspective to people. This is terrible, but I read more satire news than I do real news. I, w- there's Be- no distinguishing it these days. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is pretty much one and the same. Yeah. But it just get oh, it's so, like, I have to, I have to read at least something from, yeah. you know, Duffel Blog, The Onion, Babylon yeah. Beat, whatever, yeah. you know, just because everything else is so dark yeah. and so, like, angry and yeah. everything. That I have to read a, a stupid article about, you know. It's a great way to uh, bring levity to a situation, but only for yourself. I mean, it's always wild to see, you know, when something happens. I mean, Babylon B and The Onion are great examples of this because Babylon B is a very conservative leaning, you know, uh, satire site. Onion is definitely more, you know, progressive liberal. And seeing them write, you know, the s- different POVs yeah. on the same thing. It's always funny to see that dynamic go back and forth. So tell me about uh, End of the Bench. Yeah. That's a, in, this is yours, right? This, this is my baby, yeah. You create, yeah, you're trying yeah. to get it off the ground. Trying to get off the ground. We are we are off the ground and running. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't mean <laughs> trying. I, I don't know why. I, I uh, should have worded that differently. No, no, uh, no. Um, yeah, End of the Bench. Uh, it was a pandemic baby. It's a sports satire publication, so much like Babylon B or, mm. you know, The Onion, you know, whoever. Um, we do just fake sports news. Um, it was a, 
uh, pandemic baby that a couple friends and I started. This was like 2020 ish, I think about. Um, and it started just as a way because, you know, uh, the world shut down, you know, and we were not able to go to mics, you know, people couldn't go to classes, people couldn't, mm-hmm. you know, do a lot of things that comedians do, you know, that have to be in public and be seen. So, um, it was really just a way to kind of, or it was just kind of a way to, to have a creative outlet, you know, for people to write a lot of the, you know, comedians that I work with are writers first and then there will be improvisers or you know sketch artists whatever you know stand-ups like yourself um so it started as that and then it kind of just like took off really within the last like two years um and it's gotten to this point where like you know ten thousand people are reading our stuff like four times a week and um you know we're getting people within the sports community professional athletes and journalists who are now like you know sharing our stuff which is wild never would have thought that this little, you know, like newsletter that I started or that we started uh, would grow into what it is now. So it's it's really cool and we're really enjoying it. That's pretty cool. That is pretty awesome. Yeah. Man. That is pretty awesome. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I always thought that, I don't know, sports satire is just as, it's it's more, I think it's more fun to me. I, I, um, I always wanted to, I always, I wanted to write an article. I was, Cause you asked me the other day if yeah. uh, you were like, Hey, if you're not doing yeah. anything, you know? And I was like, okay, what would I write about? And I was thinking about like uh Cardinal sport or Cardinal baseball. Yeah. And a couple years ago they had the rally squirrel. Yeah. Or whatever. And I was like, what if, what if the rally squirrel got tested positive for steroids or yeah. something like that? You know, they had to call back runs because they're like, he was on, he was on performance enhancers. It could happen. You know, you know something, something stupid like yeah. that. Um, yeah. So let me get into a couple questions Let's do right it. here. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a first. This yeah. is a, an absolute first. Yeah. Uh, you said that you have an obsession with applesauce. Applesauce, man. It yeah. uh, it was a again. I realize it's like the most ninety year old man take ever, but I love a good. And I was just talking with somebody about this Saturday or last weekend. Um, a good bowl of Mott cinnamon applesauce slaps harder than so many other dessert options and i like again i know that's very senior citizen of me but it's the best best. i okay so what applesauce yeah i i don't know i don't you say you keep saying it's a 90 year old man thing but i've never seen i don't know i don't think i've ever seen anyone over the age of eight be like oh man I, i think i want some applesauce like my son, like the one in the middle, yeah. I was going to say which one's the best, but you definitely, I mean. None of these, for you, sure. No, no. Mott's, I think that says no sugar No added. sugar, which is like not even applesauce. No. Like, again, but... I go for the worst imaginable kind of applesauce. Oh, okay. like it's, so you want the flavors? I want the want... flavor, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever had the go-go squeezes? Uh, they I come had... in like nine different yeah, flavors, so and it's just all sugar. We but... were talking about that, too, over the week. We had a very discussion. Very big discussion about applesauce. Um, But they were telling me that they come in like carrot or like um, like strawberry, like banana, banana. Yeah, and then we got into um, this whole discussion about like other foods that were like in tubes that you know are Uh good to eat. We we're talking about gogurts. Do you like gogurts? I gogurt fan. I do not. like I wasn't go-gurt. a gogurt fan either, and that was apparently a hot take. Like everyone loved him, but it I, tasted terrible to me. So I'm a, I'm very weird. I don't like I don't like soup or stew. Yeah. Or broth, and I almost put applesauce in the soup category, Oof. which I know it doesn't make sense, but yeah. that to me. When I think of applesauce, I just think of like a spoon and it's, I don't know. It's not chunky, but it's not smooth either. It's not a sexy food. It's not. There's nothing attractive about it. It looks unattractive when you just pour it out. It's mashed apples. (laughs) Yes. It's just cream of apple. Like it's, uh, I don't know. I've seen people, like you said, with cinnamon and sugar and stuff like that. And they can kind of class it up a little bit. But I still, I just, I don't know. So, but yeah, Gogurt was out too. Yeah. I just, the first time I ever tried it and I got a little bit like on my chin yeah. and I was like, no, yeah. never, never yeah. again. Did you have the beard back then too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was eight. And it <laughs> just, it got, that's it. That's what stained these yeah, hairs white. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah. Um, no, it was a, it was an obsession that was born out of uh, deployment. Um, 
I mean, obviously, you know, like, uh-huh. you know, church groups, like, um, you know, family organizations, uh-huh. USO, they'll send these, you know, giant crates of care packages and stuff to, you know, fobs, to outposts, to cops. Um, and, at, you know, in Afghanistan in 2013, 2014, when I was there, that was all that we would get is these, you know, big packages, but they would have um, uh, non-perishable food items uh, like applesauce. So it was really just like, I needed something like it was always just like there because nobody else was like eating it. And uh, sure enough, like six months in, I'm like asking people like, yo, like send me crates of applesauce, like <laughs> mott cinnamon applesauce I wanted in cups. It was like that in uh, Grizzly Wintergreen Tobacco. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Grizz- those were okay. like the staples. Yeah. Long that cut. That was my diet. Was it? Yeah. That was my diet. I did pouches because long cut was, mm. as you know, more more potent. Yes. And if that shit fell out of your lip, like, and then you were out, you know, were places you were not supposed to be. Like, it was just, I don't know. Uh, it, it was a dead giveaway because that wintergreen is just so violent in terms of smell. But, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. it smells like, uh, well, uh, what was, it used to smell like rumple mints to me. I don't know why, but I would always smell it coming out of the can. Oh, yeah. You just hear the whack, 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 whack. It's the best. And they crack it open and you just get that mint. Yeah. And you're just, ugh. It makes like, me <laughs> sick just thinking about yeah, it Yeah, I can't. I I've can't. long time, or I've quit for, I don't know, going on like year two-ish now. And I say two-ish because of like, you know, I still have a drunk at night where I'm like, yeah. ah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, why not? I just throw one in here. I went on a bachelor party like last month and I, you know, got a little – a little tuned up and i was like mm, you know why not i'll just bring a can for the trip and sure enough it was it just came in so clutch. i probably won't even touch probably it probably won't even touch probably it probably yeah. won't even need yeah. it yeah and then, like five minutes into the car you're like yeah give me that <laughs> oh it's so bad it's so bad but uh yeah those were my staples it was grizzly wintergreen pouches and uh mott cinnamon applesauce I uh, I actually enjoyed Red Man. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that anymore, but your it tobacco's was, racist. Yeah, yeah. But it was <laughs> delicious. It tasted like grapes to me. Yeah. And and uh, like that's and then I found out later like oh no no that's like the hard stuff like yeah. that's the pure stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like you're Chaw. probably better going back to. Uh, I'm glad I I'm glad I stopped before Zins came out. Oh man, Have are you, you a big Zin guy now? No, I can't. I I won't even touch it. Yeah, because like, you know. I know. Yeah. yeah. I've heard. I will do them uh, every now and then when people just have them. You know, be out on the golf course or like mm-hmm. I'm just reeking privilege right now. Um, <laughs> be yeah. wherever and uh, you know, people are like hey, you want one? And I'm just like ah, oh, try. It. I don't feel like I get the same like buzz that i would from like tobacco or like a pouch but like they're nice you know <laughs> they look nicer like, zen the methadone of pouches that's basically what it is <laughs> yeah, like, well, it's, it's all like right, a diet but... form like i went from coke to drinking diet coke essentially yeah, yeah. Uh, but they say it's be- i don't know if they say that it's better for you but it's supposed to be better for you less I... habit forming maybe i don't know i carried around they came out with coffee pouches oh i saw Brines. those yeah i love i those. do remember those oh man i remember those that was a good step down yeah. because it still tasted like it tasted good and you were like all right yeah and it had the same like feel you know in your lip oh yeah it's that the, was one of the hardest the burn parts. yeah the burn is what gets you because yeah. it's like you hate it after because you're like oh like i can feel the cancer like setting in but then when you're doing you're like oh that burns so good like what the I, you were talking about getting care packages sent yeah, to you yeah. and it, i before i forget i wanted to say like yeah best Best care package that we ever got yeah. was we wrote Taco Bell a letter. And we were like, oh, we miss your food. And yeah. they were like, obviously, we can't send you yeah. food. It'll go bad. Yeah. But they just sent giant uh, boxes of sauce. Oh, shit. Like fire sauce, wow. mild sauce, like everything. And What'd we you were, put that on? Everything. I mean, <laughs> every, <laughs> everything. <laughs> we, we would dump it in bags of flaming Hot Cheetos. Yeah. We would dump it. On an MRE, we would dump it on, you know, all kinds, just anything and everything. Yeah. And, and that's what we, that's what we wanted. Uh, that's good stuff. Was, that was the best, man, that was a, it was so crazy how simple that uh, life was. You appreciate the things. Yeah. Uh, I remember, I'll never forget, I, we were out on a mission. I was gone maybe like three or four days and it was the first time that i'd ever been out out um and came back and just like taking a shower which just like yes. oh my god 
uh and i'll tell people there's like you just have no idea i mean that was like three or four days like you were mm-hmm. in infantry so you guys were out you know even yeah. longer than that but like you understand like it's just the little things like that that you just appreciate so much it, yeah and it doesn't even have to be a hot shower no it could be cold it was yeah. running water was yeah. really the like oh my god like i don't have to like jump in a lake or a river yeah i i can get clean and i don't have to waste my my ration of water <laughs> They did. Uh, one of my seniors told me that when they were they were in Fallujah, yeah, and uh, when the they were coming around and they were going to drop off hot food, uh-huh. but you couldn't get hot food unless you had a clean shave, and they'd been out for two That's weeks. That's tough to do. Yeah, That's tough to do. Exactly, and they were like, "Okay, well, I, it's 112 degrees right. out. I can either waste my water." Yeah to shave or I can just dry shave two weeks. Of, and they said that they came out and they were all like just patchy yeah. and bloody and stuff like that. Probably had acne for the next like six months. Oh, I can only imagine. <laughs> that was the worst. Oh, That was the worst. The I remember worst. having that argument with somebody one time. Yeah. I mean, not really an argument, but just like, you know, yeah. you'd point out, you'd be like, so you want me to cut my skin open and then roll around in the mud? Yeah. Isn't that going to lead to infection? Wouldn't it be more sanitary to grow beards? Yeah. And they were just like, stop. Yeah. You know, just shut shut up. up. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, good talk. Cool. 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 Go. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the military. Make it as hard as (laughs) possible at all times. All right. I was going to ask this because I read your article. I mean, best pet. This is a no brainer. It's a bulldog for sure. Yeah. I changed. So I changed out the picture to a bulldog on purpose just because i know you said you had a dog i do a bulldog i do his name is blue he will be uh i don't know when this comes out but he will be uh 10 in like a week which is crazy i got nice uh i got back from afghanistan may 21st 2014 i got blue i think june like first week of june he was like 15 weeks old uh so yeah he's been with me through quite a bit and like nearly 10 years now that's so crazy yeah. that that's been 10 years already. 10 years is a long life for a bulldog so we're very much entering the uh the quality of life twilight hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah like he's moving very slow but yeah he's my he's my best buddy for sure yeah yeah that's awesome it's yeah. crazy that, that that's been 10 years already 10 years has flown by and it's uh i mean just to even think about like where I was, I felt like a just complete different person. Like mm-hmm. I was just a dumbass kid, and I was, you know, 23 at the time, and uh, you know, literally exactly. in Afghanistan. Exactly. And I look back now, I'm 33, and I'm just like, what the, like, what the hell was that life that yeah. I was living? You know? Yeah, exactly. I got out in 2016. Okay. And I had a wife and two kids, and I was like, what am I doing? I'm yeah. 26, like that. Well, I was just talking about my this uh, yesterday with my wife. I was like, oh, I can't believe we've been here like five years. And she's like, we've been here like eight years. Isn't that insane? It's insane. I, did you have this after you got out of the military? For like two years, it just felt like I was on leave. And every now and then I'd catch myself thinking like, oh, I'm going to have to shave and get a haircut. Yeah. Because I got to head back soon. Like. You have, um, I mean, I think there's a lot of different things that just take so long to let go of, you know, and there's things that even still, I mean, outside of like things like, you know, PTSD and dealing with like TBI, stuff like that, hearing loss, um, Mm -hmm. like the physical things, like just the routine of life, you know, in the daily, like wake up, you know, at zero four, like, you know, PTs at zero five, Mm -hmm. five thirty, whatever. Um, and then like eating, like I'm still very much to this day, like eat very, like I eat at, you know, seven or eight, I eat at noon or like, uh, and then I'll eat right at five. Like when chow would like be on post. Cause like, that was just my life for so long. And Uh then like my body feels weird when I don't. And people will be like, why do you eat so early? Like eat at such like regulated times. Just like, I don't, it just kind of worked out that way. And I don't know. It's like one of the things that stuck with me all this time, but yeah, being late, I'm, like, never late to oh. anything. I'm 10 minutes early. The anxiety, oh, my gosh, yeah. of, of thinking you're going to be late. Oh my God. Or, or that's why I messaged you, like, a couple hours <laughs> yeah. early. And I was like, hey, can we push it to 2.30 yeah. instead? Because I just want to make sure. Yeah. And I'm glad I did because I still was 
You get like, anxious. Up to the minute. Like, okay, all right. You get I got to make sure everything's uh, yeah. uh, okay. But I, th- there's been one comedy show in the six years I've been doing it. There have been one comedy show where they told me, you know, hey, all weekend we've got two shows, uh, 7.30 and 9.30. Yeah. You know, like, all right, cool. But for whatever reason, on Sunday, it starts at 7 Ooh, instead of 7.30. They throw you off. Oh, my gosh. Because yeah. I got there. I always try to get there like 30 minutes early. Yeah. And so I got there at 7, yeah. thinking 7.30. Yeah. And the guy just went like, oh, there you are. Okay, cool. Cutting it close. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? What? What do you mean cutting it close? Yeah. What do you mean? I'm 30 minutes early. He's like, no, yeah. it, we're starting now. And I was just like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. And I like instantly forgot how to do stand up yeah. because I was so panicked. It throws that I was you off. Almost late. Not even late. Almost no. late. It's terrible. It throws you off. Um, and it's wild because like, I think this innate sense of like time uh, would be, so, I mean, life would be so much better if you could just learn to let it go. But I don't know if I'll ever get to that mm-hmm. point in my life where I'm just like, I have to be early. Thing. It probably drives my friends crazy because they're very like casual. One of my best friends in the world, Max, is like, like consistently late to everything. Uh-huh. And he and I, we don't like fight about it, but he knows it drives me <laughs> crazy. And we're two taller, like, you know, polar opposites in that regard. But I don't know if I'll ever be able to get to his level where he's just like, I'll get there when I get there. Gr- great guy. One of the best guys I've ever known in my uh-huh. entire life. And he just has this awesome attitude of like, I'll get there when I get there. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, oh, my gosh. There's like seven people in my – they come to mind yeah. when you say that. But yeah. there's – there's especially comics. Yeah. I don't – what is it about comedians that you're like <sighs> – I think, I, I think it's it's great when you go to mics too because they'll be like, oh, like sign up starts at six, and you'll have people rolling in at like six forty. You know, show starts yeah. at seven. You'll have people rolling in at like six forty five, being like, yo, can I get on the list? And it's just like, sign up was forty five minutes ago. Like you're fifty people deep now. Like what were you expecting? And then you know they turn around and get mad. Like why didn't I get on? It's like well, you know, you're here forty five minutes. I think it is though. Like there's something to with like the stand-up lifestyle for sure it's very late night right so Mm -hmm. i think people are just naturally sleepy you know so they're like constantly just operating like a little slower and like behind um (sighs) running on like cigarettes cocaine and alcohol like at all hours of the night so they just lose you know all sense of time but uh not necessarily around here but um yeah it's it's different it's different improv people are always on time though because they never want to miss a performance. I've noticed that. Really? Yeah. Stand-up people are always late. Writers are just, you know, free birds. They just come and go as they please. Improv people are never late. Hmm. I, 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 I've never noticed that before. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I haven't spent a lot of time with improv. Yeah. I've always kind of had this, I don't know, I guess it's a controversial topic. But, oh, here we go. But, uh, yeah, improv is kind of like uh, pineapple on pizza. Oh, you don't like it? Well, it can be done right, yeah. but most of the time yeah. you're like, mm. Are you one of those people that's like, SNL hasn't done anything good in like no. years? No, 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 yeah. no. Uh, I, I haven't seen SNL in a while, Yeah, but I do catch clips occasionally on yeah. Instagram. And a lot of times I'm like, oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. But I haven't sat down and watched like a full episode in yeah. a long time. And I don't know, I... I feel like uh, anybody who's like, oh, it sucks now. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, I, I think you just want it to suck. Yeah. You- it's it's weird because there is this attitude of like, oh, SNL is like not what it used to be. You know, it says people who were not even alive. Like when like Dan Aykroyd <laughs> and like, you know, John and the Blue Shoes were yeah. like involved, like Chevy Chase, like you weren't even alive. So like, what do you know? The other part about that, and I think what people don't realize is like, for all the, um, you know, the the great time sketches, like, you know, Church Lady or Van Down by the River mm. or, like, you know, Sweaty Balls, like, those are three to four minute sketches out of hour long present, you know, yes. presentations. So yes. they're picking one clip and basing every future episode off these incredible performances. It's like, no, for every, you know, Church Lady, Van Down by the River, there is. There's a hundred shitty sketches that uh-huh. never saw YouTube or never seen the light of exactly. day. Exactly. And now you have this new age of fans who are coming into this and, you know, social media and obviously, you know, the internet has changed a lot. Um, but 
Bless you. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I was trying to do no, it. You're good. <laughs> I, was, I saw the scrunch face. I was like, he's either taking a shit or about to see it. So. <laughs> Wouldn't that be... <laughs> that would be a podcast first. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be right as you're talking about SNL. I'm just like, oh uh, no! Yeah, just I just my lose, I just lose the battle right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it it bothers me when people are like, oh, SNL isn't as funny as it was. The other thing is too is like living in those eras. I don't think people probably even truly appreciated the great talent in that moment, right? So like for. People like Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, um, you know, mm-hmm. again, a, you know, Chevy, Belushi, whoever, Dan Aykroyd. When you're that year, you know, these people are just on the cusp of making it big. And I think that's what people don't realize is like Saturday Night Live stars are big, but they're still very much working on their craft. And this playground that you get to witness every Saturday night is a live audience. They get to do their job once a week. And you're telling me that like, you know, they need to nail it a hundred percent of yes. the time. Like uh, yeah. imagine someone coming to your job, which you get to go do every day and be like, you weren't a hundred percent on today. Like the amount of pressure. So it's crazy. I well, could go on that soapbox forever. It bothers no, me. No, 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 no. That's fine. That's perfect. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. Cause when you, you talk about some of the, like the famous, like all time sketches. Yeah. Nobody remembers the sketch that came right after no, that. Like no. Van Down by the River. Yeah. What came after yeah. Van Down by the River? It's insane. You you can't you can't know and you can't t- it's just yeah. it's a whole other thing for me, but I still very much uh enjoy Saturday Night Live. I tell people who are kind of new to it, go into every show hoping you get two or three sketches that legitimately give you a belly laugh, right? Yeah. Like no matter what, it's just like you get 10 to 15 minutes out of an hour long live presentation that really stir your soul, that really make you like, Oh my God, that was funny. I mean, the same could be said for sporting events. I mean, look at a baseball game. That's three hours long. You're telling me every minute of that three hours. I mean, have you seen Lance Lynn pitch in a baseball game? It's Mm -hmm. terrible. It's just fastballs for two and a half hours. Like Cardinal fans are doomed this season, but we got them back. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's something. This this oh. new take on SNL. I so I love the Cardinals just because I'm from St. Louis. Yeah. You know, you have to like you have to you have to yeah yeah. And and but I'm not a huge baseball fan. Okay, I've actually enjoyed it so much more since they've done the the, the pitch, pitch clock. clock and stuff. Yes, because yeah. it's like all right, let's get it going. Yeah, let's make it happen. Yeah, I I think the Moneyball like that way of doing baseball ruined it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I argued with I. I like to give my father-in-law a hard time sometimes, and I tell him that like any uh, good son-in-law should. Yeah, <clears throat> and I tell him that baseball, baseball was just invented for math nerds to get sunlight, and I'm like, that's the <laughs> only reason, because every time he starts talking about, you know. RBI percentage yeah. and, and and all the like he breaks yeah. down the math and he does yeah. the and I'm like see you're ruining it. Yeah. You're ruining it. I I'm not good at math at all. Yeah. So I'm like it's nothing happens anymore. Yeah. Like and I like to give it I don't know, I just like to give him shit for that. But um <laughs> it's uh it's the one sport where I feel like there's such a tussle between like the old heads and like this new younger it's the uh-huh. only sport probably more than any sport that's dealing with this, like, um, I don't know, this generational gap, right? Like, it's a very old game, like Mm -hmm. baseball in itself. Like, there's not been a ton of innovation within the game itself. I mean, the pitch clock, like, was the biggest thing that's happened to the actual game of baseball in so long, right? And didn't they change the size of the bases? And the size of the bases. I mean, the size of a – that's where we're at in sports. Like, people are freaking out about the size of the base, like – that's that's the big thing that's changing this game. So that shows you just how much has changed in this very, very old game where it's like, I mean, the NFL stuff changes every year. There's a new kickoff rule. They're already, you know, reconsidering, you know, reverting that rule. The Super Bowl this the year. The Super Bowl, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's they, just, they, they were like, we actually didn't know the rules. Yeah, I mean, the, it's, it changes constantly. It's more of a fast game. The other thing with baseball, is it's such a slow moving game. So it doesn't fit this new era of sports fans who are like, I need my content in five seconds or less. Like I need to be able to watch it mobily. So I'm really interested or really interested uh, to see where it goes. If they keep doing stuff like, you know, the pitch clock and increasing the base size. What would be the best rule that you would implement to make baseball better? 
they should have an actual pitcher's duel. Like, they should have two pitchers duel to the death out in the middle of the field, and I think that I think that would bring in fans. Okay. Like if you made baseball like Gladiator, people would watch. Like, if you had two pitchers from opposing bullpens just coming at each other with lances and everything, swords, I think that would draw fans. What if – New and old. What if uh, if a pitcher hits a batter with the ball – Yeah. And – Injures them. Yeah. It takes them out of the game. Uh Uh-huh. So now, if your shortstop got beamed in the side of the head, now you have to – now your team, when it's in the outfield, Uh has to play without a shortstop. Oh, kind of like a dodgeball, like knockout type scenario? Yeah. Okay. So you have to either be like, no, 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 I'm good. Yeah. I've got a broken hand, but I'm good (laughs) and still play. (laughs) Or – I don't know. That's just off the top of my head. So I, it's kind of like dodgeball, but it's also like soccer. Like if you get a red card, like yes. you just don't get to replace somebody. Like, mm-hmm. okay, that would be interesting. Um, longevity for players would be oh, it would not diminish. Long. It would. Yeah. It would. Um, but I could. I mean, it would I just could be see murder it. ball. After it would be I mean, murder yeah, ball. Yeah, That's yeah. the solve for any sport. Just make make it more murderous, <laughs> and people will sh- make it more violent, and people will show up. Look well, at- actually, I I said this about basketball the other day that I think they should reverse the point system, where the three point line should now be one point. Yeah. Anything from deep uh-huh. is one point. Yeah. Anything like uh, inside of that is still two, uh-huh. but if you're doing a layup or a dunk, it's worth three points. Interesting. Because now, if the game's on the line, you're down by yeah. two. You know, whatever you have to drive to you the gotta, net you every get a dunk. time. Yeah, those would be pretty cool finishes. That I. It would be like uh, what is that slam ball with the trampoline? Oh yeah, you remember that? Oh yeah. Oh my god. They're bringing. I, must... I think somebody said I they're bringing it back. I thought I saw that. I thought I, hope I saw so. that. I hope they do. I really loved watching that. I mean, terrible basketball, but like oh, yeah. all-time acrobatics. Yeah. Oh, and just concussions. Yeah. And because just, the just... guys would literally tackle each other in midair. Yeah. Again, more violence. That's what this world. Needs. I don't know when the last time you were on a trampoline, but the it's I, been a minute. Yeah. Well. It's one of those things where you're like, oh, yeah, I remember how to do that. Yeah. And then you get on as an adult and you're like, <laughs> oh, no, no, this is terrifying. This is horrific. Yeah, I, I used to do backflips <clears throat> on this thing. Yeah. yeah. I used to I used to get on there with like a trash bag. Yeah. And my buddy would get on and we would sit there and like butt, hit each other until one of us fell off. Yeah. And it, it, I just tried to go from like one end of a trampoline park to the other on my son's birthday party yeah. and tore my hamstring. And I was like, this is terrifying. Mm. And he's doing backflips and, Dad, watch this. And he'll, like, land on his neck and just be like, oh, yeah, it's fine. And now I'm – everything just seems so much more Harder. stationary. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. that could be said for anything. Like, after you turn 30, it's just, like, everything becomes harder to do and it hurts after you do it. Yes. Like, you ride a bike. You're so, I went for a walk the other day and my calves were on fire the next uh-huh. day. And I, I mean, I, like, I work out. No big deal. Um I, uh, I don't know if you guys can tell. I don't know if you guys can tell. Like, I'm freaking jacked. Uh, yeah, I just like to go walks around my neighborhood. Uh, you know, I live in South City, um, and my calves are on fire just from, like, walking up and mm-hmm. down hills. Like, the next day, I'm like, this is this is 30. This is me. I uh, The other day, somebody was trying to convince me to jump a fence. And I was like, I'm just going to walk around. <laughs> and they were like, like no, nah, ah. come on, man, jump a fence. <laughs> jump it. Come on. Don't yeah. be a boot. And I'm like, no, yeah. you don't understand. I'm past thirty. Sure. Man. Yeah. You're still twenty three. Yeah. I'm. I've got a decade on you. Right. I'm. A, I'm past the point where my body wants to heal itself. Right. Like if you got hurt, your body would put itself back together in like back. like two weeks. Yeah. You know? You're bouncing back. This is if I get injured now, it's something I deal with forever. Yeah. Like or I could scale that fence and die. Yeah. Like trying to flip over that fence because my body would just be like, you don't deserve this Mm-mm. anymore. Oh, oh, okay. You think you, oh, you want to, <laughs> it's like the military. Oh, you want to play games? Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Fuck oh, around you you want to be out. stupid? Yeah. After I tore my hamstring, I went to the VA yeah. and I told him, I was like, oh, I was at a trampoline park and I felt a pop in the back of my leg and Ugh. oh, it hurts. And she just went, you were where? Yeah. And I was like, I was at a trampoline park. And she went, sir. <laughs> And she just looked at me, just like, "Sir, yeah, I we s- both know you are too yeah. large. You are. I was going to gonna say that. you're too big of a guy. I yeah, feel like I know. I know. to be doing that kind of stuff. But you're also a dad, so like, you have to like, yeah, participate in that shit. I see. I would always look at the dads that were on the recliners outside yeah. of the trampoline park, and I'm like, look at them. 
They've given up. They don't want to be real parents. Mm. They don't want to get in there and, mm-hmm. and make games and stuff like that. Yeah. And bam, 10, 15 minutes in, just pop. They were looking and, at you just being like, this dumb bitch. Yeah, they were like, ah, <laughs> rookie. Yeah. Like, yeah. I thought I was changing the game up. Right. I thought I was improving. You were trying to be above and beyond. <laughs> but but sure enough, I just went crashing down. There goes and the now. Hand. Now the other the last time we went back, I was like, "Hey, buddy, I don't I don't think I can jump anymore. Yeah. You go jump, you know, have fun, yeah. whatever. I'll just be over here." And I saw one of those massage chairs. Yeah. And I was like, "Sure, I'll be here Great. an hour. Might yeah. as well get in it." I didn't realize how miserable I actually would be because I'm you you pay for your time uh-huh. and then you sit there and you have no control over it. Yeah. So like sometimes it's like doing that thing where like you're doing like a, the slow worm in it's this basically chair. basically just melding your body the way it wants to. And then I ran into people that I knew. Yeah. But I'm like I can't get up. I paid to sit here. Right. So now I'm stuck here till it's done. So I'm trying to have a conversation and then it starts doing this thing on my back yeah. where I'm just sitting there just like shimmying my titties at this person <laughs> i know you know and i'm just like trying to have a serious conversation while looking right. at them and they're well, like putting on a free show yeah like how you else? been yeah. uh pretty good i guess yeah. like that and i was just like oh man this is one of the worst experiences of my life shimmying my titties yeah that needs to be just on a t-shirt that's uh, well that'll be the title of this episode <laughs> shimmying Shimmy my, my titties, titties. <laughs> yeah i'm about it i'm about it uh i've been do were you ever into like the super Ooh. trashy reality tv shows so here's something about me is i absolutely hate reality television yeah um there are very f- there are a couple shows that i like but i consider them to be less reality um i don't like like any of the uh like bachelor bachelorette oh no uh uh-uh. mm, totally out on that no nope. um i don't like uh the like big brother um, oh i can't I stand used that to, like i used to back in the day watch survivor but then it just got like kind of old after time because i was very like repetitive yeah, yeah it's yeah. like okay you're dropping strangers off on an island like they're gonna be i don't know just got um i will watch um I will watch stuff like Love on the Spectrum, which I really, really like. I was, like, shocked about how much I got yes. into it. But, like, that show is so freaking wholesome. Like, it's impossible to walk away from. The Australian ber- version it's unbelievable. is so much better. It's unbelievable. I loved it so yeah. much more. Well, that was, I, so I watched the U.S. version and then jumped right into it because I was like, I have to have more. Well, I was hooked because – so I have a nephew named Michael mm-hmm. who – was born in Australia and okay. he has an Australian accent. Okay. So the very first episode when you meet Michael, he's like, Hello. Yeah. I'm Michael and I have a Spurges. Like yeah. that I was like, I'm in. You have a really good Australian it, accent. Well I've been around it. Sure, yeah. Times. Yeah. Okay. I I can sometimes I have to like pull my nose and then yeah, I yeah. slip and no. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was surprised at how much I loved uh Love on the Spectrum. Yeah. I didn't I didn't think I would. I like Same. when I first turned it on, I was like, this is mean. Yeah. What are we doing? And then I watched 30 seconds and I was like, I love all of them so much. Yeah. And you, I want you, all of them to find happiness. You want all of them to find love. And now I'm like following them mm. on Instagram. Uh, the guy, James, with the long blonde hair. Uh, I never even thought to look them up on Instagram. S- solid Instagram follows. James, uh, do you remember he was the guy with the long blonde hair? He was a little bit nerdier. He was like into fantasy kind of sci-fi I stuff. I think so, yeah, yeah. Talked very eloquently, but very, very fast. Great Instagram follow. Just provides insight just <laughs> on life and like shares his experience. But yeah, it, I I was very much in the same boat. I'm just very early on. I like had heard about this show and I was a, obviously like very late adapter to it, but I was like, what are we doing? Like, this is very, like, you know, what level have we gotten to that we're just uh-huh. needing to, like, you know, create the – but, you know, you watch it and it's like, no, they, these are stories that need to be told. Um, yeah. And I think that stuff is a lot better than these, like, dating show crap where it's, like, very performative, like, very, like – um, I mean, it's not even reality because it's all acting. I mean, all these individual crazy people might as well write their own scripts um, – it's insane. It's insane. It's, yeah. it's trash TV, in, I, in my opinion. I could not agree more. Yeah. I can't stand 
uh, what was the new one that came out recently? Love is Blind or something like that? Yeah. I, I thought it was going to be about blind people, <laughs> like the autistic people. And I was same, like, I'm in. Same. Like that. I watched 20 seconds of an episode, and I was like, yeah. oh, no. I will say I watched one season of it. A girl I was dating uh, at the time, this was years ago, um, just happened to have it on, like, obviously, like, doing the boyfriend thing. It's like, hey, we watched what I watched mm-hmm. last night. Like, let you know, your turn. So... She like made me watch this and I was embarrassed about how much I got into it. And not even from a like, oh, I love this show. It's because I hated one of the characters so much. His name was Shake. He was the worst guy. He had this amazing, beautiful woman named Deep T. He was, I believe, like she was successful, like in business or like real estate business. He was like a vet, but he was like this major dick. And the whole time I'm like yelling at my TV, like, woman, what are you doing? He's a terrible person. <laughs> Yeah. But I was embarrassed at like how much I got into it for the wrong reasons. And that's why I just, again, I can't, I can't, yeah. 99% of reality shows I'm out on, but there is a 1% that I, that I will. I can't do, I don't, I don't enjoy games like deal or no deal. I don't enjoy yeah. who wants to be a millionaire. Uh, I used to, I'll watch I family used to, feuds I used to mess with who wants to be a millionaire back in the day. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. When just, it first started. Yeah. When yeah, we yeah, just yeah. Uh, was on, I remember watching that, uh, the million dollar episode where the guy I think calls his dad. And he's like, like the, Hey dad, I'm going to like, yeah. I know the answer. Like that was like a cool, like live TV moment. That like, was, that yeah. was cool. That was, uh, that was up there with like when Jason Bourne's like, "Hey, you should get some sleep. You look tired." And they're yeah. like, oh, "He's watching us." Yeah. Like, I was like, "That's the coolest thing." I mean, I've what ever a seen. flex on yeah. live TV to just yeah. be like, "Hey, by the way, like I know this shit," but like yeah. just want to let you know. And he hadn't used any lifelines leading yeah. up to it, and he's I mean, like, he "I think I'm going to use." Literally the called game. I mean, yeah. in terms of like athletics, he called game. Yeah. Like he was Checkmate. Kobe. Yeah, he was like Kobe pulling. He was like, "This shit's going in for sure." Yeah, he just had that dog in him. <laughs> Shout out Kevin or whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever that, some generic yeah. ass. Spencer dude had that Spencer, dog in him. Yeah, Spencer yeah. had that dog in him on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the reason I asked about reality, I guess I don't know if these count as yeah. reality TV shows. Okay, but Scared Straight, To Catch a Predator, Cops, Cops and Cheaters. Cheaters. Do you remember any of these? I mean, they are the. If not, we well, just move on. But Scared Straight's the one with the uh, the kid put the kids in juvie, no, right? Oh, in in or like actual prison. prison. Yeah, 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 the misbehaving kids. Uh huh. That one was funny for a while, but then uh, I I remember <laughs> watching a few different episodes because I was like, this is hilarious. Yes. Like I thought it was just funny, but then a couple episodes I was like. Some of these kids need some help. Like this is just like. And there was a couple of them where the kids get so traumatized. And I was like. Yeah, they're gonna I, be okay. Yeah, like I don't know if we're doing the right thing here. Yeah, maybe we should have yeah. gone the other way. Yeah, like uh, it was tough. So I remember <laughs> that one to catch a predator. Like that was I'm a '90s kid, so like oh, that, yeah. that defied my generation essentially. Not pedophiles, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but meeting with them, on but the, meeting with yeah, them yeah, online. Yeah. No. Um, that, I mean that was. It's crazy that that was a show, and nowadays it's just like, well, that's the internet. You know, yeah. like we used to have uh-huh. a show where we could catch these creeps, and we just don't. I, is it still on? I th- I don't know. I don't know if they're new episodes because Scott Scott Hansen just like took off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if he ever freaks people out, like when he walks <laughs> in. You know, like just imagine going to take. <laughs> Get like your takeout order from yeah. Applebee's or whatever, yeah. and the guy brings it, and he's like, "Oh shit!" Oh, uh, he thinks about his entire online history, yeah. like the previous like six months. He's like, "Fuck!" Yeah. I swear that girl was eighteen. I, 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 I don't. I mean, I, she looks like she could be right. Yeah. I mean, huh? Like just instantly, like thinking. <laughs> I wonder if anybody's ever confessed because they like they thought they got caught. Yeah, there's he, like. He Hands was just, up. He's just trying to get like a cappuccino or something. At Starbucks. Yeah, he's at Starbucks and like just one person was like, "All right, you got me. You got me. Yeah. You got just me. Like, All fuck. right. I I am sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I just I couldn't help my. I, I'll I'll go peacefully. You don't need to tackle me. And they're like, I would watch that. What? Are you That's ta- what they need is to catch a predator on the road like not just like you know what i'm saying like they go hunt these guys down like in their place of work or like at their business and chris hansen just walk he doesn't even have to say anything to anybody he just walks in 
and, and just, they just stares. Need, yeah, like they just need a camera on that person to watch them squirm. He <laughs> he just follows someone around during their shift. Yeah, at, like Home Depot right. or whatever. Right, just slowly walks, and every yeah. time they look up, he's just standing there, like just looking at there. paint samples right. or whatever, like very mysteriously. <laughs> it's a weird phenomenon for a the, pedophile to be creeped upon. It's to surprise a predator now. Like yeah, that's, surprise. Just, <laughs> that's, that's all it is. Yeah, surprise <laughs> to surprise a predator. Yeah. Uh, cops is, I mean, yeah, that was classic. It was, I was a big, um, I will say this. I liked cops. I liked, um, America's most wanted more with John Walsh back in the day. That show fucked. Um, I loved that he was, um, so invested in it because of, uh, his His son son. being kidnapped, which is really powerful story. I, I think that's my biggest like takeaway. Is, is isn't I, that where Code Adam came from? Isn't that his son, uh, yes, Adam? Yes. Yeah. So a lot of like important legislation like came out of this show. So I think that was the biggest thing for me between reality and scripted is like I love stories. And I think that's a big reason why I love comedy so much is because it's people telling stories, telling their life stories. Um, and when you get reality, it's just like they say it's unscripted, but it becomes it's it becomes not even like it's it's beyond script it's just so fabricated beyond like not even Mm -hmm. entertainment but an enjoyability to it and just like becomes noise for me yeah it's Uh, all just background noise it's background noise um cheaters was great too cheaters was that i mean that was that part that was part of that afternoon lineup when you were a kid on the cw 11 it was cheaters uh maury and um uh jerry it was like back to back to back. Jerry Springer, <laughs> Maury, and Cheaters. And you just had, like, as a 12 year old kid, like an afternoon of adultery. It was amazing. Oh, I know. I yeah. know. It was insane. Uh, you would go from, from, yeah, from Cheaters to You're Not the Father yeah. to, like, what was the name of the show? It might have even been Cheaters. Okay. Where they had the pop up. Like clip art text. <laughs> yeah, that, like, do you remember that? Yeah, I think it was Cheaters because it was the little uh, yeah. like magnifying glass that was like broken or yeah. with a broken heart. And it'd be like, <laughs> Daryl fucked up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like yeah. Daryl's wife just caught him fucking someone oh. else. And you'd be like, that's a good fact. Like I yeah. wouldn't have known that unless they wrote that Whoa, down. Whoa, yeah. Like my 12-year-old brain couldn't have put that together. I always like when they gave them like the word, the thought bubbles or whatever. Yes. And it yeah. was like. Oh no! Yeah, like, I like, messed up. Like imagine get you. It's like your most embarrassing moment ever, live yeah. on national television, and then they have Windows ninety six clip art just popping up, like like a, a sad bear, like yeah. Mm. Just a little uh, the little clippy art guy would come uh, up. And be like, <laughs> the paper clip. The paper clip. <laughs> Looks like you got caught cheating. Looks like would you, you got, need yeah, some would help. Would you need some help for that? <laughs> Command Shift five to like backtrack. No. Um, uh. <laughs> Those were all, I mean, all great shows. They were definitely, I will say, I watched a lot of more of that when I was a kid because we just had basic cable, so, like, it was uh-huh. on. Um, nowadays, I love the fact that I just don't have to be, like, <laughs> subjugated to it. Like, I can uh-huh. pick just to watch something else, so it's nice. I, I find myself, I guess this is how old, of an old man I am, yeah. but I find myself... Sometimes if I, I I get so sick of scrolling through Netflix yeah. or Amazon or whatever to, to find something that I might like, I go to YouTube and I just look up compilations of Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn yep. or Cheaters yep. or it, Cops reruns yep. or whatever. And yep. it's, it's always good. Yeah. It's always good. It's crazy thinking like back when we were kids, like if someone would have told you like, Hey, like you're going to have a search engine one day, that's going to have just all of your favorite episodes of everything ever. Or uh-huh. like your favorite moments from these, like I would have told you you were crazy, but now we have this, but I'm the same way as like nowadays I will watch stuff on YouTube uh, this should make us feel young, by the way, mm-hmm. that we're like so hip to using YouTube yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Um, nowadays, I'll go watch like reruns or like old sketches of uh, like SNL sketches or Mad TV sketches. Um, I love Mad TV. I wish they would have brought. I was just. I always thought Mad TV was God, so funny. I thought on average it's better than SNL. It was like SNL dark like yes. kind of like that was in in living color was the same way yeah. like it was a great sketch mm-hmm. show like that did stuff that um you know snl couldn't or necessarily wouldn't do at the yes. time 
and it was great to have those alternatives, but I was bummed when they canceled Mad TV. Well, it's like you said earlier with SNL, it's like people compare it to like these all time great sketches and yeah. you know, you, you're lucky a good episode makes you laugh three times, Yeah, you know, whatever mad tv you had some episodes from start to finish that were like fantastic damn this is funny yeah and you would i mean every episode i remember watching being like oh that was good yeah like oh that was uh the <laughs> the well, kenny rogers milk challenge do you remember <laughs> that <laughs> i think every i, I think that's a staple it's probably of the top military five. yeah i think because i i remember there were so many, like, before every class, before every PowerPoint, you know, death by PowerPoint, yeah. they would do an attention getter. Yeah. A lot of them were mad TV sketches. Yep. And oh, I miss that so much. I know. They need to bring it back. They're rebooting so many other things. It's just like, yeah. that seems like a slam dunk to, like, I don't know what network is going to, like, realize like there is room for another live sketch comedy show it actually surprised me that fox has not done one considering they're so anti like you know progress i mean they're a conservative new network the fact yeah. that they've not done one yet but they'll trot out greg gutfield you know every night is just like beyond me but i feel like they're all about animation now right yeah they do really well their... they do really well there um but fox is just an example like hbo like you know uh -huh. could do it max like especially with these streaming services like consolidate like disney like why do they not bring back like a sketch show or like a big sketch show for me that i grew up with was all that on nickelodeon yeah, which yeah. was like my very first sketch show i'll never understand why all that went it was all great. that the amanda bind show oh my god like, clarissa explains it all <laughs> yeah that was tv that was we were kings we and were we kings. didn't know it we were kings we were kings <laughs> kings of late night television nick at night oh which way we... uh oh, wow you said you're into you're into um movies you're a bit am. of a cinephile or whatever i uh, am do you have a is, what's the best war movie war or military movie because there's always Ooh, this distinction yes, there's great good... military movies that i think are not or they're not war movies uh yeah um few good men few good men not is... a war movie military movie military excellent military movie um the last castle which is one of my all-time favorite movies oh yeah with, um robert redford it's a prison break. james da gandolfini gandolfini yep. mark ruffalo is in that um fantastic movie i loved that movie i oh. love i love that they came up with a, a new rank structure yeah they would call each other chief yeah and the whole uh buddy salute. And, yeah yeah um yeah. love that movie um in terms of war movie 1917 cinematically and aesthetically was just, I mean, brilliant. I mean, the fact that they did that in one long shot uh, is incredible. Like, there are no cuts uh -huh. in the movie. I don't think even people realize that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, like, true moviegoers and, like, or, you know, people who read about it, like, but for normal mu moviegoers, they don't realize that entire movie is one consistent. It doesn't stop. Uh -uh. There's very few movies that do that. Um, Birdman with uh, Michael Keaton was another movie that literally did 17 not. 17 minute. Did not stop. Yeah. Did shots. not stop the entire time. Um, Saving Private Ryan is Saving Private. I mean, it's yeah. a fantastic movie. Tom Hanks, any military vehicle driven by Tom Hanks is usually a banger. Um Fury. I would say Fury is probably yes! yeah. Fury is probably my favorite war movie. Um, that is not older. Hamburger Hill is a really good uh -huh. one. Like Apocalypse Now is an excellent one. I'm so glad you brought up Fury yeah. because I keep telling people that to me that is the most like realistic in in terms of just like. When people die, they die. Yeah. And you're like, and but you wait, just, what? You just have to move. What happened to the... No. He's like, no, no, no he's you, dead. You go to work the next day. Yeah. Like, yeah. you don't get a chance to, like, cry about... Like, you just go back to work. Uh-huh. And, and, and there's so many things in there. There's so many, like, moral dilemmas yeah where it's like even the good guys are doing things and yeah. you're like i don't know how the I dinner feel. table scene and is you're just like it doesn't matter what you think encompassing of yeah the i mean any conflict I yes mean, soldiers entering people's homes their communities their lives and having to interact with them uh -huh. all the while these people are scared shitless of you i mean yes. you've been overseas so yeah like you've interacted with people being in the infantry like 
these people will respect you, but because they have to, because you're holding a uh -huh. gun, you know, yeah. and they're nice to you because you're holding a gun. So it flips a very like, I mean, for a war movie, it kind of flips that on its head, which I found really interesting because more, you know, almost every military war movie is like pro America, like pro uh -huh. the troops. Not that the Fury wasn't obviously did a great job of, you know, paying respect to, you know, the tank units uh -huh. uh, during that time. But scenes like that are like, mm, good guys do bad things yeah. sometimes. And that includes people who wear the uniform, which is like, whoa, you know, you hadn't seen that before. But Fury is probably my most like, man, when I need a good like gut wrench outside of like these, like yeah. main, 13 hours is great. Like John Krasinski is fantastic. Great story, Benghazi stuff. That's another. That was another one that I loved. Hacksaw Ridge uh, is a great story, mm. not a great war movie. It's too no. over the top. Yeah, it's, it's it takes away from how great that story actually yes. is. The actual story of the yes. in the Met. I can't remember the gentleman's Desmond name. Desmond Doss. Desmond Doss. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, has this heroic, you know. De factor, we actually had when I went through basic. It's funny when that came out, people would ask me like, "Hey, to like, does this happen? Like, can people just openly like de facto?" And we had a guy in my basic mm -hmm. training company um, that was a um, chaplain's assistant. He was from or going to become a chaplain's assistant, but he had such a orthodox religion. Basically, had been siloed into this orthodox religion that still did not allow him to carry a firearm but he was still able to serve, mm -hmm. you know, in the military. And um, so it was just wild to be like, oh, like, yes, this has happened before. But, yeah, this was incredible. That was an incredible story. We had a guy in our company. Um, his, Ironically, his na last name was Priest, uh, <laughs> but he was a conscientious objector. Objector, yeah. And he was in an infantry unit. And there, it wasn't like a big deal. It wasn't yeah. like in the movie where they're no. like, we're going to injure, you know, you're yeah. going to be in the brig. for." They were just like. Okay, well, we've got, like, office stuff that you can do. Right. And that was it. Yeah, that you was know? it. And it's like, yeah, it, it happens. I think different era, too. Like, now, I mean, when you, you and I got that, in, like, yeah, it was exactly. a different time of war. Like, back then, it was just like. When every... did you when did you go in? So, this was, I got in 2011. January okay. 2011, got out. Uh, 2016. 2016. Yeah. Or, excuse was... me. Uh, no, yeah. 2011, 2016. So yeah, I was two, 2010 to 2016. So basically the same time. Same period. time. Yeah. We were crossing paths and didn't even know it. <laughs> I loved, uh, but back to Fury. Yeah. Is that uh, the the military side of it is, is, it shows you a side you don't normally see. Yeah. But it's also got a great, like, war side to it, battle side of it. Oh, and they come over the uh, to the top of the ridge right there, the top mm -hmm. of the cliff, like that. It's like a half hour straight of him just running around like. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I love, I mean, in the, the there's a scene where like a German officer is like, we're going to skin you alive or whatever. Yeah. And Brad Pitt's like, shut up and send me more pigs to yeah. kill. Do, 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 do. And that, so you still get your dose of like, America, yeah. you know, but it's, oh. I love that beginning scene where it's very just quiet. Oh, yeah. And you're just the like, horse. Totally, and he just comes out. <laughs> Yeah, it's like holy shit, that sets the tone for the whole movie. Uh, and then immediately he's like, he hears bombs coming. He's like, whoop, rain's coming. And yeah, he like closes, and it's just back to business. And you what know? a what a crew! I mean, yes. Shia LaBeouf, John Bernthal, Logan Lerman, uh, Michael Pena. Like, yes, unbelievable. Just like those five guys, just having to create, like, recreate this moment. I can't get over. I can't. I could not imagine. Did you ever get inside of a tank? Yeah, not. Uh, driven around but i've been inside one yeah, yeah same same thing yeah. uh we just got to like get inside and like look at it and yeah. stuff like that and these are the you know big abrams yeah they, they were huge yeah and inside very tight quarters. very tight compared to a sherman from world war ii where all five of those guys they slept been, they yeah. would sleep in these things which is oh, insane what? insane which is which is i that's not unbelievable to me because i've seen I mean, people in the military can sleep in oh, any yeah. position you get them in. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I like you find a corner you could kind of prop yourself up and fall asleep standing up. Yeah. Maybe not even without that much difficulty. Yeah. So yeah, I I believe that they were sleeping in there, but it's crazy. man, I can't imagine. And now, um, 
they've gotten rid of them. They yeah, got rid of the now we have these like up armored SUVs and just different time, man. I know everything's done by drone. End of an era. <laughs> I know. Era. Uh, which that's scary. It's scary to even say that like we were in a different era than what it is now. Like ten, how uh-huh. fast it's moved in ten years. I mean, a, a military conflict and how battle is done. I mean, cyber warfare was like. It was a thing, but like nowadays, it's yeah. just so commonplace. I mean, the amount of cyber attacks and the amount of stuff that we deal with is a complete different level than it was <laughs> during Iraq, Afghanistan. You know, I remember meeting a couple Marines that were like, "Oh yeah, we're we're pretty much specialized in cyber warfare, protect or whatever." And we're like nerds. Yeah. All right, whatever dweeb. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that. You just like ha. Ah. Whatever, and now yeah. that's like the most, yeah, it's one of the most important job. things. Yeah, it's, it's, it's job. an insane job. It's a kick-ass job. When I was when I was a marksmanship instructor, I trained a recruit who uh, was he was going to become a drone pilot. Yeah, and I just remember looking at him like, "You're gonna have so many confirmed kills." Yeah, like, and I just remember looking at this kid like, I almost felt bad for him in a yeah. way. Like, it's weird. <sighs> Um, I knew one drone pilot, um, not super well, but he would just be like, he said very early on it was tough to get to because, I mean, drone, again, I don't think people realize like how drone operators, you go to mm-hmm. a, a Connex that's about this size, probably yeah. smaller. It's a box, like just in the middle of a parking lot, essentially. And in you, Las Vegas. In Las, in Nellis Air Force Base, right? Yeah. Like out, out in the middle of the desert. and you are literally just strapped into this like flight simulator looking thing with a joystick and killing people. Yeah. And you walk out and go home at five o'clock or like, you know, like that's your day. Like you're not getting dirty. You're not out there like getting shot at. You literally walk into a dark room for eight to 12 hours, go home at the end of the night. You gotta be a special person to kind of do that. Yeah. uh, To be able to deal with that at least. It's, oh, it's, the, oh man, it's just that, that, about. that it is, it weighs on me just yeah. to think about that. And, and it's one of those things that people wouldn't never understand. No. Like if you were like, oh, I'm a drone pilot, they'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah. Like weird. But I, oh, it, oh. it's, uh, it definitely requires some, uh, some mental gymnastics. to get <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> sure. No kidding. Yeah. No yeah. Kidding. Yeah. Uh, you said you were into video games? I am. That You're is what I do right. with my free time when I'm not uh, openly bombing at mics or getting, you know, editing. I um, I used to be a big into gaming, but <laughs> I had to give it. I, You're a dad now. Well, it's I'm tough, a dad, right? and with as far away as I oh, live, yeah. it's I had to. You had to pick. Well, that, and I ha- I think I have, like, a very addictive personality. Yeah. So I get hyper-focused on something. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to beat this. Yeah. I can't move on until I finish this. And so I realized very quickly, I'm like, well, it never ends. There's it, always a new Call of Duty. There's always there really a new is. bundle pack. There's always a new... That's how they get you. Yeah. It's and capitalism, so for baby. <laughs> people like me yeah. that are like, I'm almost done. And yeah. then it resets. And you're like, oh, I got to start over. <laughs> But yeah. what's the best type of video game? Role play, first person shooter, strategy, third person shooter? Um, you know, my attitude about games has changed definitely as I've gotten older too. Um, I enjoy games. I definitely enjoy like uh single player games more than multiplayer, I'd say, because I'm a big fan of story driven stuff. Yeah. Um some of my all time favorite games are like The Last of Us One and Two, which tell an incredibly powerful story. Um you know, uh, the Witcher, um, Horizon Mm -hmm. Zero Dawn, like these are some of my like, they have these awesome characters that have these awesome narratives behind them. Um, So I enjoy playing those the much. They're also, I mean, nowadays, like everything's open world, meaning like it's not so linear, like you can kind of choose your own path, which I like. Um, I don't like though, like games like um, a big game last year was Baldur's Gate 3 and that was probably a hot take for the video game community but I wasn't a fan of it it's very much like a role playing Dungeons and Dragons type game um, very cool in terms of you can literally choose whatever your story is but it moves so slow like I need a little bit of pace to it I yeah. need a little bit of like push but not like you're shotgunning me down like a singular hallway like give me a little bit like drive but like I don't know. Those games just get kind of boring to me. Um, stuff like Call of Duty, like, I like, but it's gotten so bad, like, over the last yeah. probably decade. It's just gradual decline. I played video games with 
um, like same core group of friends and we have people who are really into it. And I just, I don't understand it cause it's just objectively gotten terrible. Yeah. Um, the days of like call of duty where you were so fucking amped to like play and uh-huh. like you would have these 12 hour grind. It just doesn't happen anymore. It's the same, like, and, and I think they've kind of realized it because they're going to stop making a call of duty every single year through multiple different publishers. I think that kind of like got burnout. So maybe that's what it is for me is I'm just burnout. It uh, definitely took a turn. It was so fun. Cause I remember video games. Like when I think of call of duty, I go all the way back to like the first time, like golden eye. Yeah. Playing that with your like friends. shooters. Yeah. And my hot take is that video games were ruined by online play. The t- <laughs> I, yeah, yeah yeah i understand yeah. everyone in the world is going to be like you're an idiot and um, maybe i am i don't think that's so i mean the days of land parties were awesome yes. you remember those like yes. you, you and your boys would like yes. bring over the nintendo 64 like xboxes whatever it was you'd all like have your own tv me and my friends did this as late as like seven years ago we would play Fortnite like every friday yeah we'd literally but we'd all come in the same room and play an online game together i would love that because we're part of that generation that just had land parties like we didn't know how to like disconnect and we don't do it anymore because they've all become dads and like yeah. have lives now and stuff but um yeah like i loved that era of gaming so i don't think that's a hot take at all i honestly would prefer if we go back to that i would i would yeah, I would pay money to get a LAN party Like together. a Halo It'd LAN like, party. Yeah, yes! Mario Kart, Halo, uh, GoldenEye, like yeah. something, you know, from back in the day. Yeah. Like, oh. Kids don't understand gaming. No. That was the peak of ga- Mario Party with your friends, like motherfucking your friends. Yes. Like, at, and just cursing them out for like stuff that was wildly out of their control. <laughs> it was I, the best. I remember an argument I got into in fifth grade over a well placed banana peel in Mario Kart. And I mean, just, Mar- just furious. Mario Kart would get contentious. Oh my God. To say the least. Yeah. Oh, 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 so many, so many arguments where you're just like, what are you doing? You like that. Yeah. The blue Uh flying shell would just come out of nowhere. (laughs) You'd be cruising along and that blue flying shell would come The music change and you hear the. Just just dead. Yeah. You hear it tracking onto you. You did. Oh man. See, that's the thing about games. I miss. I miss that. We don't have that same level of uh, camaraderie anymore. Um, there's, a, there's a game that I've been playing recently, though, that's given me, honestly, uh, a lot of hope. Uh, Helldivers 2. I don't know if you've seen any of the clips of it. I've seen, yeah, I've seen. Military people love it because it's literally Starship Troopers in like the most satirical mi- militaristic. <laughs> se- like it's soup. Their whole thing is, uh, their whole uh, phrase is, uh, help us spread democracy, oh, uh, yeah. which is okay. just hilarious, like in itself. But they're very, like, you know, liberate. <laughs> spread democracy <laughs> to insects. Yeah. <laughs> It's very funny, but um, it's PVE, meaning like there's no player uh, versus player. There's no like online versus. It's all procedurally generated, meaning you never play the same like area or group of enemies twice, Mm. meaning it's constantly changing. Um, And there is, I mean, the whole writing and like concept of the game itself is very funny, but um, there's still an aspect of uh, friendly fire, which is creating this like very funny, like, positive like just set of i mean rush of content like um i work in social media for a living and i'm just seeing like the the digital conversation like has just gone up the last month and a half with this game but it's overwhelmingly positive and it's over overwhelmingly like just gold moments of friends laughing with each other and not motherfucking i <laughs> yeah. mean i still motherfuck my friends all the time uh my buddy cj kills me in hell divers too all the time and i hate him for it uh <laughs> but it's creating these moments that like we had when we were kids where it's like, it's such a like communal thing. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's definitely bringing back, there's some nostalgia aspect to it when I play it. Um, and then it just has all these other great things too. So I've, I've seen clips of it and it looks fantastic. It's I, awesome. It's awesome just to play like, you know, just as a video game, but it just has this, They've just got this right mix going right now, and uh, they're crushing it as a result. It reminds me of, I don't know if you ever got into this game, but I loved Gears of War. Oh, yeah. 
and definite it, gears of war vibes yeah it yeah. reminds me of like the horde that yep. you could play against yep. where it's just wave after you wave. and four yeah zombies yeah. is big in call of duty yeah. too which that's become a whole other like there's a narrative behind it now and like you have to basically look up youtube videos on how to beat zombies now like yeah. they just don't have the like you have to find a key yeah to like the classic a... mode where you were just locked in that cabin and like you know, you just get that red marker on the bottom. It's like, you know, you get that gut feeling. Oh, shit. It's about to yeah, get away. The music work. would yeah. change. And oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't have that anymore. It's different. Um, which sucks because that, yeah, for, uh, I mean, was just, uh, that was peak gaming. It was the 90s were peak a lot of things, at least for me. Maybe that's just the old man side of me being I, like, that was peak. No, everything. no, I, I agree. I, I think, I mean, Halo, uh, Halo 2. Yeah, I remember when that came out. I remember just being like, "People lost their minds." I was like, "This is it. Yeah. This is as good as it gaming will never will get ever better. Get. Yeah. The graphics can't be any better than no. this. The the you know like yeah. that." And I'm sure if I looked at it again, I'd be like, "Oh, this is they terrible." Have, but uh, you can pull it now. With, I have a PlayStation, and now you can play like these classic games. Uh, and like every now and then, they'll have one for free that I'll like download just to see how it looks. And I pull it up, and it's like my my tv has a seizure because it like yeah. can't comprehend how <laughs> crappy the graphic quality is um but yeah that was that was peak gaming man, man. back in the day those I were the miss, days oh i miss those, those i do i do enjoy the the massive like on um uh, i don't even know what you call them but like red dead redemption oh that was so much another fun. story that is just well, you just take you just you, you were, just go. You, you know? were an emotional wreck at the end of that game. Yeah, and if you didn't want to do anything, you didn't have to. You could just ride your horse for ten straight hours if you wanted to. Uh huh. Uh huh. Just listen to music. Oh man, <laughs> Those, I had a buddy who had come up with. Uh, he came up with his own playlist. Yeah. Just for riding around yeah. on his horse, and, and he would put it's on headphones best. and just. And I'm like, yeah, I like it. I yeah. It's, Nothing wrong with that. It's funny that um, next year we'll have um, two very big games that were big when we were kids, come, like re-releases, or not re release but like the latest editions. Grand Theft Auto Six is going to come out, and this whole new generation of gamers is going to discover like what Grand Theft Auto was. But like, it's just wild that I was playing like Grand Theft Auto like two and three when I was like uh -huh. ten years old. I remember playing Santa Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and being like. This game is like, oh my god, the, cool, the yeah. coolest, violent, most like provocative thing <laughs> I've ever seen. And now we are like 20 years later, and it's that. And then um, college football will NCAA. come. NCAA. Oh, NCAA. I'm so excited. The amount of about hours it. that I put into that game over the summers that I just would like create, like take these zero win teams to like national championship, like McNeese State, like you you mm -hmm. build and recruit. <laughs> Um, so I am glad that they're bringing some of this stuff back and, um, hopefully it ushers in a new, new era of gaming for us all. Uh, maybe I, I hope so. My, the other day, my, my son is not into sports, like not really. Okay. Like he says he likes basketball, but you know, it, it's just kind of something to do. Yeah, I think. yeah. But the other day he asked me if we could download Madden and he's like, oh. I like because his cousins play it. Okay. And he's learning some of the rules. Yeah. And he's like watching some of the players and yeah. stuff. And I was like, oh, it's like a little glimmer of hope. Right. Like, a little glint want, in your eye. Do like, you want to play Madden with yeah. me? Like, like, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this moment. It's a true father-son moment. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because our, our, only, our only experience playing games together now is like, Lego Marvel Avengers or something like yeah. that, where you have unlimited lives and you can just, it's a it's an open world where you just run around, but you yeah. can't really do anything. It's you not know? good like co op or like yeah. Uh, yeah. And so now it's like oh, this might either this might either make us like bond our relationship yeah. or absolutely it will break become it. toxic for sure. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. There's no way that ends positively for you at all. <laughs> He's already he already, I already had to introduce him to Mario Kart. I did that one time, and then I quickly established dominance in my household. Yeah. Which I'm pretty sure you have to do. You have uh, to. It might be one of the commandments. I'm not 100%. It's, but It's life lessons that Mario... The amount of life lessons that I learned while out on Rainbow Road, I can't even <laughs> oh, tell yeah. you. Like, yeah. Coco Mountain. Like, don't even come at me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty learn, sure... Learn the hard ways. I told my nice. son, if he ever beats me in Mario Kart in a race... 
I have he's gonna take over the mortgage. Yeah, and just because like, you're the man of the house. Now. Yeah, I, like yeah. you want to win a 50 cc, like Grant. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go See ahead. what happens. Yeah. Your entire life changes. <laughs> enjoy, <laughs> enjoy uh, taxes. Yeah, uh, enjoy that. Well, we're we just hit about a. M- hour and a half we did yeah oh my god yeah we're flying uh we can keep going if you want or we can call, call it the time uh, in the world man all right you tell me it's your deal sh- 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 sh. let me get a couple more in here i listened to all the world war ii stuff with jack I think oh yeah yeah, yeah a lot of these so i i make questions for each person you know yeah. and sometimes i get uh Sometimes I get more in than I than yeah. normal, but then they're all like right there. Yeah. So I try to like scroll down to like a further away question. Okay. Sometimes because then a it, deep cut, or else it's just like the same six questions over and over. Yeah. I was asking uh, somebody this the other day. I don't even think I have a slide for it. Yeah. But uh, what would be the what do you think is the best scent combination? Scent, con- like yes. smell. Yeah, like smells. Wow. I don't like know if, if you were gonna make your that. own cologne. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, every the- time I think about cologne, I think about uh, Dennis Feinstein from Parks and Rec. I don't know if you're familiar with that show. Yeah. But he's a cologne. But he's just the worst guy. Um, and he makes like the most provocative cologne set. I can't remember. It's so bad. Um, cologne smell. That's an interesting one. I'm thinking like. Like something pine, like okay, I don't know, like foresty, uh-huh. maybe like something fresh. Um, I don't know, I'm not a cologne guy yeah. either. Like, I'm not a bit like I don't even wear cologne, I will wear uh, like aftershave or like you know, beard lotion, well, even if it's not cologne, like maybe like a scent air freshener for your car or house. Like, you walk in the kitchen yeah. and you want it to smell like. I wish my house could smell like bonfire constantly. I love the smell of bonfire. I I've said that was that's yeah. been my answer for yeah. a while. Is so I want something sweet. Yeah. Like a vanilla or like a warm brown sugar. Yeah. And I was gonna either, say cookies or bonfire. Yeah, and then a, like a burnt match. Yeah. Or uh, bonfire. Yeah. You know, but like I've been saying, sweet with like a hint of arson. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like uh, almost as if like a bakery were to set ablaze. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Like that's burning bakery. Yeah, that's what the flavor. That's the scent that I want. Burning bakery. Burning bakery. Yeah, do that. Yeah, burning bakery by Clay. It's it's kind (laughs) of like uh, you know when the the brewery gets going, like you smell the hops. Yeah, it'd be like kind of like that, but sweeter. You know, like you can Uh tell something's on fire. Because at a certain point in the fire, all of the sugar would melt. Right. And then it'd get gross. It's like when um, somebody somebody sent me something the other day that said, like, if an atomic bomb were to go off, there is a certain distance away where yeah. all the frozen pizzas would be cooked perfectly. Oh. And I was like, I've never thought about Damn, that. that's true. And so, yeah, like a bakery <laughs> fire, there is a certain point where everything would be. That's true. And it's perfect melting point. So next house fire I see in the city of St. Louis, I'm gonna run up to the store. I'm gonna get a Jack's Frozen. And yeah, get and a couple. Get, yeah, and just like get progressively closer to the fire and, uh-huh, see, and see which one. Where's yeah. the perfect temperature? I never thought about that. What an interesting. It kind of is like uh, <laughs> cracking an egg on a sidewalk, kind of. Yeah. Deal. Like the hotter it, like. Mm, okay. <laughs> it just vaporizes the egg. It's, yeah. Uh, it's. <laughs> I, I wonder why nobody thought to do any of these experiments, you know? Probably because you get arrested. Like, I feel yeah. like or someone would call vapor- the cops yeah. if they <laughs> saw a grown man, like, laying Jack's frozen pizzas out sporadically, like... <laughs> away from a fire. Away from a fire. They'd be like, he either started the fire or needs to be locked up because he will start a fire. So... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like those firemen that are so into fires yeah. or just so bored they start yeah. their own. Right. Like, just, you're a little too into this yeah. backdraft. How did you get here so quick? Yeah. You beat the truck. Yeah. Like, ah. Nah. <laughs> nah. I was in the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, that would be fun, though. That would be fun. Uh, best football movie. Are you into football at all? I love football. Okay. Um, I'm still upset they took my Rams. Yeah. Be honest with you. Yeah. Fuck Stan Kroenke. Um, it's, 
not a fan of his. Um, I mean, LA obviously, the city, need city, it. yeah, they don't really need anything. They don't need it. I don't know if you've ever been to LA, but yeah, those people don't need anything. It's terrible. They have everything out there. They have sunshine. They have good weather, money. I I hate LA. I, I hate, love San Diego. Yeah, San Diego. I don't know. If I was you... just in San Diego actually uh, two weeks ago for a wedding. Stay downtown. I'm a, I'm a little worried about it because I haven't been back since like 2016. Yeah. And I was really worried. And I keep hearing about how like everything in California has just declined. So I'm worried about, I was worried about San Compared Diego. to what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. I don't know. I went there and I was like, it's beautiful here. And yeah. I'm walking around there like, oh, like okay, there's good. homeless people. I'm just like, have you ever been to like St. Louis or like the Midwest yeah. or like. It's amazing here. No, I had a great time. It was okay, good. Out there. Yeah. We're going. I'm going back in uh, July. Oh, that'll June, be good. July. That'll be good. I can't wait. I'm yeah. so excited. Beautiful and, weather out there. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, in comparison to L.A., like San Diego just hits a thousand times harder. Well, L- I hate L.A. L.A. is just. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Like the last time I was there was 2016, and yeah. even then was bad. I've so I have. I performed in New York, LA, Chicago, and obviously out of all the three, I prefer Chicago, but yeah. I, and if I ever got the opportunity with like, you know, if Lauren Michaels calls me tomorrow, I was like, Hey, like, want to come to move to New York? Like, yeah, I would move well, to New York, maybe. but like, <laughs> like, let me think about it, Lauren. Um, but I would never live in one of those cities, like willingly, No, like New York, LA, Chicago, I would go back and live New York, LA. I would like, I don't know how people do it. Like I, they're great fun cities, but mm. like. And I'll probably get a lot of shit for this from my, my New York friends who are like, we live here. And it's like, enjoy your 400-square-foot apartment, loser. Exactly. <laughs> well, I went there at the end of uh, January. I was in New yeah. York City. And I did a couple mics. And and one of the things that, like, when I first got there, it was like, oh, wow, I can't believe I'm in New York City. Yeah. And then within a couple hours, I was yeah. like, this place has got a lot of problems. You're tired. Like, yeah. You're tired. Yeah. It's a weird and, city because you have to spend so much time away from your place of living. Uh-huh. Because when you get back to your place of living, it's sad. You, like, unless you have a lot of money, like, <laughs> exactly. you have to spend so much time away from where you actually live. So when people tell me they live in New York, New York City, I'm just like, okay, well, like, where do you just go and hang well, out? I got sick of people shitting on St. Louis because they'd be like, oh, isn't it, like, super dangerous? And yeah. St- isn't St. Louis, like, real run down? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, maybe it is. But you know what? I have a house, and guess my mortgage is like six <laughs> six hundred dollars a month. Right, enjoy that, and they're like six hundred dollars. I'm like, yeah, it's insane. enjoy your one bedroom for yeah. eighteen hundred. I was whenever I was living in Chicago, I was paying nearly twice what I pay for rent now, mm. and my apartment was maybe it was a studio, so like uh, four hundred and like twenty square feet, like. It was maybe twice the size of this room, uh, and I'm yeah paying like close to two grand a month for it. It's I know. Just like what to just live like I had to take the bus to Second City because like you don't I mean you can't have a yeah. car up there, but like parking is a nightmare. So like public transportation. So I'm taking the L down you know to Old Town like Second City and then doing mics and you know different neighborhoods and it was a lot. Is well, is Chicago set up? Is it a good city to like not have a car in? Is it? Is yeah. It- yeah, I will say it's. I mean, L.A. sucks in terms of public yeah, transportation. Yeah, that's what I meant because New L.A., St. Yeah. Louis. If you don't have a car St. in St. Louis, Louis it's not the public ideal. infrastructure in the city is a joke. I could get on. Yeah, I mean, we tried a damn trolley in fucking Central West, and look how that worked out. Like, I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> Chicago is by by far in a way the best public transportation transportation city I have like worked really? in, lived in. Yeah, the L is great. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, red, blue, brown line, pink line, whatever. I mean, it can take you shit all the way out to Indiana. Like, you can take it to Gary, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, or very close. Not, <laughs> not that, you'd, that you'd want not to. Not that you'd want to go to Gary, but, like, <laughs> yeah. I said Gary because I used to work with um, – people would come from Indiana. People who lived in Gary would come and, and take classes at Second City. Um, people – I mean – uh, people come from all over. I mean, it goes all the way up towards like Wisconsin, close to like it. It runs pretty far. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really fun city. It's a great trans public transportation city. Um, but it is still very much like a city. It definitely yeah. will burn you out. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I uh, I I'm 
I think I'm going up there in May. Yeah. I believe. Uh, and then I think I, I talked to somebody about doing another trip in like August. Yeah. Um, the, that's the cool thing about traveling and doing yeah. comedy is that the more p- you travel, the more comics you meet. Oh, it's awesome. And then it's, I yeah. mean, that's where 90% of your gigs come, or at least mine have come from. Out of town. Not from clubs, no. but from from people I've met. They're like, oh, hey, man, could you come do this showcase yeah. I got? And yeah, yeah. sure. All right. And, yeah. you know, and um, in like Austin, I met so many Same. people when I yep. was in Austin that it's like now next time I'm excited to go back because I can just call people yeah. and be like, hey, I'm going to be in the city. Can you help me get some shows? Can you help me get some? You know, yeah, that's so. I'm going to Austin. Uh, actually, end of the month, just ran. I did a show there last summer, yeah, like August time frame. Um, just happened to randomly meet people, but now I'm gonna go for like do three nights, uh, like last week of nice. April. So, um, Austin's another weird city, too. It's not as it's becoming yes. this like kind of fourth comedy hub, yes, um, which is odd because it has it's also just like in the middle of Texas, which is wild. Like you have a bunch of performing artists and mm-hmm. comic comedy is, I would say for the most part, like a very progressive field. Um, and Austin itself is very progressive, but the, you are still in the middle of this like, <laughs> like conservative state. So I say all that because audiences can get, I mean, you've watched kill Tony, yeah, but yeah, like yeah, 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 audiences yeah. are just all over the board, right? Like it's just, it's a very weird place. And I think that's why they said, I mean, the whole phrase is like, what, keep keep Austin weird? Is that uh-huh. the, the whole phrase? But it's a weird place. I feel, oh, man. Do I want to? Oh, so <laughs> sometimes, you know how sometimes you're like, oh, I've got to, I could talk shit right now. But Dude. it's like almost. We just met. Yeah. That's I don't, all right. Okay, so Austin, <laughs> there are great, there are. There are great places in Austin, yeah. and there are great comics in Austin. Yeah, but I feel like there has been this just like unrelenting wave oh, of people, people that are like, "I've never done comedy before. Yep. I can do it. I'll move to Austin." Oh, yeah. And it's anyone who's ever wanted to drop a hard R N word, or you know, say, uh, you know, just. W- Say things to because they want to be shocking yeah. because that's what they see on Kill Tony. That's what they see on some of these other Joe Rogan's podcasts. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. See, that's why it's like a, not to like go after Rogan. I but mean, like, yeah, I'm not trying yeah. to take a no, swipe no, no, no. at the king, you know. No, no, but no. but at it. the same time, it's like yeah. yeah. You guys realize like that's the sig- that's the bat signal you're putting out, right? And these are the bats you're getting, yeah. You know, and and then they're shocked when a yeah. year later, like, why am I not getting booked? I don't understand. Like, I've said yeah. all of the words I'm not supposed to say. How come yeah. nobody wants me? Well, There's a reason why only a few people can do it and then get away with it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. There's a reason why and everybody's a, not doing look, it. I'm a firm believer of never telling a comic you can't do this oh yeah you can't say this yeah, because yeah. who knows maybe you're the one in a million i'm not yeah, gonna try to stifle for, that yeah. you know i feel but like if, yes us saying the n-word with a hard r though is probably one of those things that's like well do you have to yeah <laughs> why do you have why to? do you i guess that's and a better why way. do yeah. you have so to. it's not telling someone like you shouldn't say that's it. like it's asking them like what is your like what are you going for here oh, yeah. but i mean we saw so many oh yeah and and just so many people that were like i'm shocking i can uh, say crazy yeah. stuff and you're like uh, it's not okay comedy. all right i mean it is i mean in, in, in essence it is but i think what people confuse for comedy and especially uh-huh. with stand up, I mean, you find this a lot. And I see it a lot, like writing too, is there's a difference between saying the most outlandish thing possible in your brain just uh-huh. to get a reaction out of someone. Like, that's what Twitter is for, right? Comedy is for, yes, you can still talk about those things, uh-huh. but doing it in a way that relates to people and that gives a perspective and makes people think about that, not just. And, and think about it beyond just like, oh, my God, I can't believe he just said that. You know, like there is, at least for me, like there has to be some type of perspective with comedy. That's what makes real comedians really good is 
their stuff is relatable. Their uh-huh. stuff is understood by no matter what room they walk into. Like the all-time comedy greats, they have stuff that plays in every single fucking room, mm-hmm. no matter what state, no matter what city, right? Um, and and people who kind of try to take away from that or just like try to say the nastiest or the meanest or the weirdest shit possible, like there is a sector for those people, but there's not longevity no. in that. There's not, lo- and that's a reason why there's so very few people who are doing that and like are successful at it. You know, I couldn't agree more. We that's don't need what, more of those people. It's like, no, we got enough. <laughs> I learned two things when I went to Austin. The first thing was there is a there. There's almost two different scenes there. Yeah. Like as far as comedy goes, there's the comedians, which yeah. were putting on lots of shows and doing lots of work and stuff yeah. like that. And then there's the get get rich quick mm. i'm gonna do one minute mics yeah. to prepare for kill tony so when i go on i have a minute of good material and, and nothing else noticed and picked up uh-huh and, yeah and but then you know like i said but then there is there is a lot of other really great rooms with really great comics yep. and really great showcases yeah. and they're all working on being real comics yeah and then you have the other dirty side of one minute yeah. headliners you know and you have they have three minutes of prepared material right and that's it so yeah. when they leave that area or they get on kill tony it's like okay yeah you look great but w- what do you got now they do the show every night man. i know they trot out 50 of you clowns it's not for con- it's for them to laugh at you I, no, <laughs> and i can't see it i go to like s- you are literal clown not that I have gotten so much enjoyment watching Kill Tony because there yeah. are funny people on there. Like Shane Gillis, you know, had, has yeah. been very successful. Um, you With, know, I've met f- people that have gone on and done well, yeah. and it gave them the boost that they right. needed because they were legit comics. Right, because they put in the work on the other side of town. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and and the the second thing that I realized was going down there was how happy I was to have St. Louis. Yeah. Because like you said, we have a, a cross section of all kinds of different people. We have, you know, it's a conservative state, but St. Louis is a very liberal city. Yeah. We have a, you know, you go out to St. Charles, we'll you're going to County get, versus city jokes. Exactly. And, and North, you know, then you have North County, yeah. then you have South, South County. County. Then you have the Grove. Then you have, yeah. you know, and it gives you a chance to get in front of all yep. different types of crowds. Yep. And if you can make them laugh, you know, if yeah. you have a joke that works in all of those rooms, chances are it will work in will all play. of America. It will you play. know, so it I, will and play. I think that's the most important thing is you have to be if you want to be a comic, you have to be a comic everywhere. Yeah. Not just in the rooms that you want to perform in. Yeah. But in the rooms where anyone who shows up is going to laugh because I, and I tell this to open micers all the time. If your name is not on the poster, if your name is not on the ticket, Mm -hmm. nobody cares what you think. Yeah. Don't talk about your politics. Don't talk about what type of porn you like to watch. You know, again, you, I hate saying to any comic, Hey, you can't talk about this. You can't talk about that. But at the same time, it's just like nobody cares. We've heard the same pussy eating joke like a, a billion thousand times. times. If I go to one more mic, I mean, I'm gonna hear. It. I say this in chat, but like, if I go yeah. to another open mic and hear a pussy eating joke, I'm just like, bro, like, <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? Everyone has said, like, literally everyone has said that yeah. joke. Not like everyone, but like, that's such a like lowest hanging branch. Like, this is just it's almost disrespectful to the I, craft. Yes, and 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 a jerk off joke and uh oh this is the porn yeah. i watch joke and it's yeah. just like people don't care yeah. now if you're selling tickets if you're a headliner yeah do whatever you want yeah because the people are there to see you yeah they want to hear your opinion but if people don't know who you are it doesn't matter yeah. don't don't talk about it yeah. just get up there and be funny warm them up and then yeah. if the headliner wants to be, you know, whatever and walk people, it's yeah. a, it's their show. They can't because they they've can. done the it, work again to get to that point. Yeah. You you earn that main stage. You put in the work, you know, you do the open mics, you write whatever. And once you get that platform, uh, you can say whatever the hell you want. I think it was Jerry Seinfeld. It was has a great quote. There's like four levels to comedy, right? Mm-hmm. The first is like 
making your friends laugh. So make like yes. if you, anybody that wants to be a comic, there's four levels to this shit, right? The first is you have to make your friends laugh. If you can legitimately make your friends laugh, like outside of a fart or, you know, like yes. legitimately write something that makes your friends laugh, you pass that stage. The next is like making strangers laugh, people you don't know. So those people that go down to Austin to serve this one kind of niche, mm -hmm. they almost skip that second stage is because to what your point was, you need to kill at different areas. You know, like St. Louis, for example, you need to kill out in the county, you know, at Funny Bone, just as hard as you need to kill at Palatopus down in the Grove, or you need to kill at, um, I mean, my my home, as I've kind of claimed it, is um, is um, not South Town Pub. <laughs> I keep calling it South Tom Pub, uh, Golden Hoosier. Um, oh, yeah. So, like, you need to kill in all those different places um, to really know if you are meant to or can do it. Because then that third level is, no, I'm a comedian now. I'm mm -hmm. booking show. Like, I'm the headliner. I'm making money. Is that third level? And then the fourth is you become, you know, national. You, like, this just becomes a job. Like, you end up making that big move to New York or LA because you have an agent that's like, I'm not booking you for shit unless you're out here. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, it seems like people have just decided to skip that second step. You know, they, they've gone from making their friends laugh to thinking like, no, this works for everybody. Like yeah. people outside of my little circle, my little circle likes it. So everyone's going to like it. And they try to then go to that third step where it's like, why am I not making money? Well, you, you're not making money because you don't even really know your shit. You know, like yes. if you go to the same open, you know, three open mics a night and, um, you know, tell the same jokes and you're not working on your craft, you're not bombing. Like it takes bombing to get to that third step. Like you have to fail miserably in that second step multiple times to even have a sniff at the third and even a dream at the fourth. Um, and it's sad that we have, you know, and I say that as like, I'm some big success, but like I've, I've, I've gotten to a good place now where I'm making money with comedy. Um, and I had to bomb a lot, like for a long, I went through second city, like seven years ago, like, and it's taken me this just to get to mm -hmm. this point, you know, how many times I've bombed or written shitty pieces to like now just have like, get this like sniff of like comedy, you know, success. And it's not even, you know, wild success is like. It allows me to take a vacation every, you know, yeah. or like pay my car. <laughs> no, like that's that third level. But yeah, it's, it's been, it's been crappy to see a lot of people like skip that second step. Um, which is odd because it's, you know, those four steps come from one of the greatest comedians of all time. So, yeah, I talk, when I talk to guy Tory, he call he calls them social medians. Yes. It's like, they get funny on TikTok, They get yeah. funny on YouTube, whatever, yeah. but they don't know how to, be on stage yeah they don't know how to work a and crowd they don't know when like, to cut to different things when things aren't working like it's an mm -hmm. art and the same could be said for for improvisers like and that's why i have such a respect for people who do you know improv for people who do theater musical theater it's like that's the ultimate live you know like ultimate like not rehearsed at all like stand up you have the benefit of like written down material like you know stuff that you can pivot to improvise you are literally on the spot expected to be funny for an hour to two hours and make the shit up every week week after week um so but with that comes a lot of bombing i am too. i am terrified of improv like, yeah. i know earlier i was talking shit <laughs> yeah. just to, you know but i am truly yeah. deep down i don't know if i could do it i don't know i because I I like to think that I would be quick enough on my feet to yeah. come up with something, but sometimes you're not. You just go to the well and it's dry. And you and have to like, and ah. you have to react to other people too. Uh -huh. So like you're part of a troop, you're part of a group. Um, Atiel had a really good point when you had him on a couple yeah. weeks ago. It's just like it's so hard to bounce off other people, and then part of that is that individual performance and recognizing and knowing who you are like as an indiv individual performer like finding your own voice and and it goes back to that second step is like that second step of comedy success is all about finding out who you are as a comic like not just being about you know the next guy to be on kill tony like the next guy to have a pussy eating joke it's like yes you have to go through step number two to really find out who you are as a comedian as a writer um, before you can even have success. Um, and it, it is crappy that a lot of people skip that step. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Um, 
Well, the last thing I ask everybody when they come on. Okay. Uh, what is the best way to fix this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any tips, oh suggestions? Uh, no, you need to get water. You need to get a water machine in here. I know. I, know. Um, I need to get bottles of water. Yeah. Uh, Got to stay hydrated. No, this has been great, man. It's been awesome uh, meeting you. It's been really great just getting to know, like I said, people in St. Louis since I've moved back. So, um, yeah, hope to see more people around in mics and stuff and showcases and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, what's your – you got any um... – you want to plug your social media or any shows coming up or anything yeah. like that? Yeah. Um, plug into the bench, obviously. Yes. End of the bench, read us. You can subscribe into the bench sports.com. Uh, free satire newsletter. We give out free giveaways and stuff too. T shirts. There's a merch shop. Um, shows. Uh, just got a couple mics tomorrow. Well, it's third. I don't know when this is going to come out, but uh, via Platypus tomorrow, be a Golden Hoosier Sunday. Uh, and the rest of stuff's out of town, so it's probably not. Relevant. Have you ever been to Have you ever been to Steve's Hot Dogs? I have been to Steve's. Yeah. Uh, have not gotten up at Steve's, but that's definitely on my list. It's a good one. It's a yeah. uh, shout out Steve's Hot Dogs Love Thursday Steve's. nights. When I say I've been there, I mean I've I've eaten there yeah. quite a few times. <laughs> uh, been to the show. Love the venue. Love the little spot. Love that it's become. I mean, it's a very odd place. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah. That's comedy, you know. There's another great one, um, Green it, Green Finch, the uh, bookstore. I mean, that. Um, oh my God, Andrew. Um, I can't remember his last name. Really nice guy. Andrew runs. Uh, yeah. The bookstore. Oh, uh, uh, Gieselman. Gieselman, yes. Yeah, thank Spine. You. Spine, yes. The bookstore. Sorry, I was blanking on that. That's another cool one. I haven't gone up there yet, but um, still like to just go and obviously yeah. watch. But just a really cool venue. So no, I, I need to get over to Steve's. The uh, the so uh, I love Spine and I love that mic. It threw me. They have a bidet in the bathroom, yeah, that's right. and it it, uh, it that threw me off. I was like, I don't know if that's the coolest or the grossest thing I've ever seen. In a bookstore, it's an interesting a public yeah, bidet. Yeah, is, I don't know if I would ever use it. Yeah, I, I couldn't. Yeah, that's yeah, tough. Yeah. It's, uh, it's that's, an older <laughs> building though, so just give them the benefit of the doubt. And a newer bidet, if it makes it. That makes it weirder. Yeah. Okay. All right. Someone's <laughs> just going in there washing their butt. Yeah. <laughs> it's just reading books and washing butts. Oh man. Welcome to open mic. That was yeah yeah. <laughs> Welcome to stand up comedy Welcome in stand all up its comedy. glory. Yes. Yeah. You either have a hot dog shop or a bidet, a bidet bookstore. Yeah. yeah. What's the weirdest spot that you've ever gone up in? Um. Or like the weirdest thing that you've seen. Oh man. <sighs> Uh, I got bit by a lady at a show one time. That was like pretty bit. Yeah, like, physically, uh, someone yeah, bit I have you? a scar right here Jesus. on my finger. Yeah, um, you were that you were bombing that hard. Or? Uh, well, I had just so I I was hosting, and then I was went back to my job of being the door guy. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, when I I worked at this comedy club when I first started, that yeah. is no longer with us, and the owner was like. Pfft, I don't want to pay for a host. Yeah. This guy wants to be a comic yeah. and he's my door guy. You're now the house MC. Wow. Um, so I went up and there was this lady being a problem and we told her that she needed to calm down or, you know, uh, the headliner gets up and just said, like literally just goes, ma'am, do you, do you mind? Yeah. And she, the lady stands up, flips the table. Yeah. Runs. I mean, tries to like charge out. Uh, the owner like gets in the way of her. Like she starts hitting him. Oh I God. get in between them. She grabs my hand and just like, and just bites down. Damn. Yeah. We had to put her like, we had to like hog tire and put her out on the street and wait for the cops to You're show a big up. Dude. Yeah. Too, so like that, she had some energy. Yeah. She, she, I mean, she latched down onto me and the only way we could get her off was I reached behind her head and pulled, she had a, like a ponytail Yeah. and I had to pull her ponytail, which made her like do that. And then, um, I like put my arm around her mm -hmm. and I let go for a second and she latched down onto my buddy Mark's bicep. Ugh. We had to go, I had to go to the VA and get like tetanus shots and rate, <laughs> like, like <laughs> my, the, the owner had to take, uh, had to take the other door guy to the hospital Jesus. and pay for him to get like scanned and tested for hepatitis God. and stuff. It was wild. It was pretty, so but weirdest place I've ever done comedy. There's a bar 
uh, in Illinois, in Waterloo, actually. It's not that oh, far yeah. from here. I grew up in O'Fallon. Oh, okay. So, yeah, uh, Anti Bar. It's yeah. like John's. Yeah. I Uncle heard that John. they started a mic. It's fantastic. Did they? The mic is fantastic. The shows when are is it? great. I need to get uh, over there. I can't remember when the open mic is. I know they do a showcase over there. Okay. I'll put you in contact with the guy who yeah, runs it. Shout out Ryan. Do. Yeah, uh, Ryan please Ballard. Do. I'd love uh, to go up there. Waterloo of all places. It's so cool because it's under the bar. Okay. But We're like, not in Waterloo. It, it's, it's like downtown? Yeah, it's right there on like the main, I think it's the main yeah, square. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. It, it's right next to Whiteman's. It's either I think it's like Whiteman's Apothecary or something okay. like that. Whiteman's Drugstore. Shows how long I've it's been since I've yeah, been to but Waterloo. It, it, the only reason I remember that is because it looks kind of like it says White Man's Drugstore. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't think you can do that, that anymore. That could be problematic. Yeah, but the the stage is under the like it's under the bar. Okay. When I was going to stage, I was like doubled over. And to get, because there's like a floor that's like four and a half feet tall. And uh-huh. then there's seats. So people are sitting like under the floor, but they can see you perfectly. Okay. It's, it's, I, I can't even, exp- it's so hard to explain. Yeah. So that's definitely Give the Give me weirdest. that dude's number. I need yeah. to check this place out It's for so sure. much fun because yeah. everyone's packed in super tight. Yeah. And, and I got a couple fun clips out of it nice. just because it was, you know, <laughs> it's good for comedy. Yeah. Comedy is so weird like that. It's weird. What about you with the weirdest? Weirdest place. Um, Chicago just had so many, like, really. I mean, it really depended on even uh-huh. what neighborhood you were in. Um, I mean, Lincoln Park, Riverview, like, Logan Square, like, just had really odd spots. The weirdest, I'll tell you the weirdest thing that ever happened to me in stand-up. It's also, like, a really great story, and then I promise I can leave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, that's the problem with me is you get me talking yeah, and I just I get very excited time. and I'm just like, um, weirdest thing that ever happened to me is, um, I was at, uh, it was very early on. I had kind of just gotten into like doing stand up uh, at the clubs, um, did Zany's open mic one night. And, um, I think it was, I don't know. I can't remember the time frame. It was probably like midnight one o'clock in the morning and this is an open mic where like 75 people sign up and by the time they get to the Mm -hmm. end of the list you're getting about like 45 seconds Mm -hmm. so i was like i don't like middle tier or whatever like thinking like i don't even know if i'm gonna get up like but like you can't leave because if you leave then you're never getting like if they call you and like you're not there yeah you're never coming back right so it's those situations where you just kind of have to wait it out and grind it out and drink an extra cup of coffee the next day but um i'll never forget I'm standing outside, out back, uh, out back of Zany's, and I'm talking to just a couple other comics, and um, people are smoking, whatever. And this guy comes up; he's wearing a hood, and um, he's like, "Hey, man, can I bum one?" And uh, my buddy was like, "Sure." And we didn't even really, like really see see the guy who it was at first. He was just wearing this hood. And he was a uh, black guy, and um, he was like, I'm about to go in here and do my thing. And we were like, okay, man, like whatever. You just see people on the street yeah. all the time. Um, uh, so we go back in the club and sure enough, about 30 minutes later, this dude comes, uh, from the back and pulls down his hood and who, who else, uh, was it, but Hannibal Burris. Oh, nice. <laughs> so we were just standing out back, like smoking or, you know, friends are smoking, singing Hannibal, Bur- didn't even recognize him. Just yeah. totally casual. But, um, that's a good thing about comedy is just like you can have those but i saw nikki was at funny bone yeah last, last night, night just yeah. came through so greg warren's there all the time yeah and, so it's yeah. I mean, it's a really cool thing when you go to these big clubs it's like these people come back to their hometowns and and show out and like come work on material so it was just like a really like wild cool moment uh to be a part of there was another time here's another time is um uh there is a bar oh my god what's the name of the bar it was a bar in logan square i don't even know if they do an open mic or if they're still open this was pre-covid um there was a bar that did an open mic and the mic was in the middle of the room so not like stage it was literal like Mm. ron swanson circular desk like (laughs) 360 so like 
it was weird because like you had to like turn in place like the whole time. Like you'd be telling a joke, like you'd start it here. And then by the time you get to it, like you just have to rotate all the way around because otherwise people are just looking at your back. But, um, there was that, there was another time that, um, this lady brought, she had like two or three small dogs, just, it was a dog friendly bar. Um, but like it was an open mic night. So people like generally just understood, like, don't bring your dogs in here. Like, and, and cause yeah. like this is, but sure enough, she brought two dogs and they were barking like the whole time. And everyone's just like, uh huh. Yeah. Like this is, this is what happens. Like this is normal. Yeah. I'm just like, what the hell? I, there was a cat at a show one time. Yeah. A lady had an emotional support, support? cat. Yeah. Okay. And, and the first like four comics all made a comment about it. And then yeah. after that, you're like, okay, well it's just a cat. Like it's, you know, at least it wasn't barking or yeah. doing anything, but it's just, that's not what you expect to see, no. you know? That would actually be a good time for pussy eating jokes because yes. there's an actual cat in the <laughs> yeah. room. Yeah, then it's okay. Then it's okay. If there's a cat in the room, tell the pussy eating yeah. joke for sure. That is crazy, though, that you that uh, Hannibal Burris was there and you didn't think anything of it. I didn't even know who it was. But it was that, dark out. Like, again, he can't, it was cold, like Chicago, <laughs> like wind. So, like, we're bundled up. Like, you know, he had a hood on and just and didn't even recognize him. To be fair, the number of times I've been outside of an open mic and a black dude's come up to me and be like, man, I'm about to go do my thing in there. Like, just random people. Yeah, like, it's yeah, just like. That happens yeah, all the time. Yeah. I would have not thought anything of it. I thought it. the dude was literally just trying to, like, be, like, cool. He was just going to, like, walk away with the cigarette and just, like, he was trying to be friendly. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, like, I'm in here all the time. But, like, no, it was actual Hannibal Burris. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nice guy. The though. one time, the one time you don't, and then every other time you follow it. I'm following. Some, and I'm asking him for an autograph. And picture. you look at in there, and you're like, oh no, never mind. That happens so many times. Yeah. Like, I, but lesson yeah. learned. Lesson always, learned. Always be vigilant. Yeah, <laughs> never always keep your vigilant. head on a swivel. Head on a swivel. That's yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, no, I appreciate you coming in, man. I hope. Yeah. Uh, if you ever want to come back, please. Anytime. You ever got a show to promote or you got a uh, end of the bench, especially with the season, Cardinal season starting up next month. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be busy and we will, you know, blues. I don't, I have no idea how they're doing this year. Doesn't seem great. But. They're, uh, they're rebuilding, man. We had a, like, it was a great run of like three or four years. We were just like, there was two summers. I feel like I was just drunk the whole entire time, like spring summer. Oh, yeah. That Stanley Cup year. I was drunk like, three nights a week like oh, watching playoff hockey <laughs> that was the best I, I remember everyone trying to keep up with brett hole and everybody oh, yeah. trying to you know and then of course last year the cardinals it was the first losing Terrible. season in 20 years Depression. or something yeah <sighs> we'll bounce hopefully back. this year we're gonna bounce back hopefully this year and yeah. maybe they'll bring back the you know the duels with the pitchers that would be great or Start it. More violence in sports, people. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. That's our closing If message. you take one thing away from this podcast, more violence in sports. Put violence in sports. <laughs> Bring the violence back. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks so much for coming in. Thank I appreciate you for having it. me, man. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you next week.